We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task, and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com alternatively you can message us on our official facebook page sewing street have our very own app you can now watch and shop from anywhere simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet then log in or create an account and you're done you can watch us live from anywhere Browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals. And message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Good morning and welcome to the Sewing Street. Look at that. Now we have had so many of you desperately waiting for this. Brand new to us today, William Morris Quill. Coming up in about five minutes, I just wanted to show you a sneak peek of it first. Is that not a thing of beauty? And we have the most fantastic, brilliant value. We've even discounted it a bit, kit for you. So very exciting. Anyway, look, it's on pre-order. There's the box. Look at that, I'll give you a little 360. Get it in a beautiful box, everything you need. I'll be unpacking it later, showing you how it all works, but what a beautiful, beautiful kit. But firstly, as always, we have a fantastic early bird for you today. Perfect for this quilt. It's a gorgeous um, root cutting square, cutting square. Now, I really like this. It's a good size. I mean, if you use, um, rotary cutters and cutting mats things i mean you probably like me you've got lots of different rulers different sizes and shapes i love this size it's kind of you like goldilocks square middle of the road it's not small it's not really big good 12 and a inch in 12 and a half in, inch square it's all marked in quarter of inch um, increments as always and it's great because it's got all of the measurements around all of the sides so if you're doing something oh it's 19.99. That's not an early bird price, Paul. We need to take some money off that. It's crashing. It's crashing. Yeah, we can't sell an early bird at the full price. That would just be silly, wouldn't it? So today, to you, it is 14.99. Fiverr. God, 25% off. That's amazing. What a brilliant price. Anyway, it's beautiful. Great, it's good quality, proper, thick acrylic, exactly the right thickness for using with your rotary cutter. It's marked on all the sides, 12 and a half inches all the way around. It's got the angles, which is really important. It's got your 45 degree angles, and it doesn't matter whether you're left-handed or right-handed, because it's a lefty and a righty. So if you go in left, you go that way, and if you go low right, you go that way, and if you go left, you go that way. Um, 
really useful for uh, even like things like FPP where you need to be rotating all the time. Really good when you want to just cut smaller strips when you don't want the really long ruler that you're using for cutting um, off the when you're cutting across the full width of the fabric. So $40.99, that is fantastic value for money. And it's nice and grippy, really good solid. So if, you've, if you haven't done any rotary cutting and you see us do it on Sewing Street all the time, thinking, I'd like to have a go there. This is a really good square to start with because it's a good length, but also because it's the square, it's really good for doing your half square triangles and things like that. Anyway, fantastic price. Now that price will only be till midnight tonight and then it will go back up to 19.99. So if you want it, put it in your basket and don't forget to check out. So if you haven't shopped with us on Sewing Street before, um, I'll talk to you about that in a minute, but today coming up on Sewing Street is at eight o'clock. Now, obviously the beautiful Will in Morris quilt where I'll be showing you everything that's in the box, how it all works, but we've also got some gorgeous William Morris fabrics for you and some William Morris accessories to fulfill all your William Morris needs. Then at nine o'clock, um, we've got the lovely Barbara McClay in with us, who is going to show us how to make at nine o'clock autumn animal and floral cushions. So these are our pre-printed panels uh, that's got lots of different pieces on it and the, you can just make a simple cushion or there's lots of other things you can make with them as well. Anyway, Barbara's gonna talk us through that. She's gonna show you how, the most important thing, how to put a zip in a cushion. It's something we get asked all the time how do you put a zip in a cushion and also how to do a simple cushion and what you can you can do but they are beautiful panels 10 o'clock it's all about bag making supplies ready for the 11 o'clock when we've got a bag making out lots and lots of different supplies from specialist fabrics that you use to tools to materials to all the findings that you need for your bags that's at 10 o'clock so if you love bag making please join me at 10. 11 o'clock Barbara will be back with us with this beautiful pattern the Rondell bag it's designed by Angela Presley and and Barbara's going to show us how to make this. It's made with a mixture of really nice heavyweight tapestry fabric and a PU and lined in cotton. We have got three different kits for you to choose from. It's a beautiful bag, isn't it? Anyway, she's going to show us how to make it very simple. 12 o'clock, very, very, very exciting. It's Yarn Lane, but even more exciting than the fact it's Yarn Lane is that we have the Zandra Rhodes launch today. So, Zandra Rhodes has been working in collaboration with West Yorkshire Spinners for the last mm, months to create her own yarn that has been spun to her colours. She's also created all of these patterns. Now, we have got Danielle from West Yorkshire Spinners, who's been working with Zandra on the collection. She's going to be talking us through how they created it. We've got the pattern book that makes all of these beautiful designs that you can see now as well as more and we've got lots of yarn packs so that you can make your very own Zandra Rhodes piece. I mean it's lovely isn't it lovely to see something bright and fresh and new and you know Dame Zandra well we all know her from Princess Diana's wedding dress and all of her many many things but really looking forward to that. Um, so let's go through the William Morris quilt. Now I'm going to unpack it here and then I'll move over. No I'm going to move over. I'm moving over. Right, the graphics are in. Now, the full quilt kit is $99.99. Now, this is a fantastic price. It should be more than that. It should be actually £20 more than that. But we know how much you love William Morris and we have been working to create these kits exclusively for you. So we did a little bit of wheeling and dealing and we managed to get it to under the £100, which is fantastic price for this beautiful William Morris um fabric and quilt and design it's gorgeous isn't it anyway because it's 99.99 that means that you can do it on split pay now if you've not used split pay before the way it works depending on the price is that how many um payments we split it into for 99.99 we can split this into two equal payments of 49.99 now that makes it interest free so we're not charging you anything for splitting it it's just that i know a lot of you prefer to spread your payments and what happens is when you put your order in if you choose split pay you don't have to you you choose that at checkout we'll take 49.99 off you today you will be sent your kit straight away and then next month you'll be taking the other 49.99 so you don't have to wait two months to have it it's just a way of spreading the payments but it is interest free if you want to pay for it all in one go absolutely fine you you've got that option 
If you haven't shopped with us before, then you all, the best way to do it is to go on to www.sewingstreet.com, click on watch live, and then if you scroll down from there, you'll see everything that is on today's show. So it's really, really simple. It's the easiest way to shop because you can see everything below that's that we've got. I'll show you in a minute. There we go, there's the website. So can you see Watch Live there? If you click on that, you can see me. Scroll down, all the things that are on that we've already shown will be on the deal of the day. Everything that is on pre-order, there's everything that's coming up. So if you want to get ahead and get this quilt before it sells out, because we do have limited numbers. Oh look, there's all the William Morris accessories. There's everything for all the bags that we've got coming up later. Um, all the findings, all the different things. So if you want to get ahead, because you know what it's like, it gets very popular when it sells out, and just sit back and enjoy the demo, then, then shop now. All you do, click on Add to Basket. Don't forget to check out. Now, the way it works is, if it's in your basket, it's not yours till you checked out. But there's one PMP a day, which is 3.95. You can check out as many times as you want. So don't think, oh, well, I need to save everything in my basket and check out once, because I only want to pay one PMP. You can check out 300 times between now and midnight. You'll still only be charged one PMP. And even better, it, this, your account goes across Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. So if you think, I want that William Morris quilt, now, but I'm going to want the Zandra Rhodes ankle socks later. You can do both of them at the same time, and it's um, it's the same PMP across Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Anyway, that's all the admin now out of the way. So look at this beautiful. Should we take it out of the box? I've got one that I'm not allowed to touch, so they don't trust me not to break the box. But actually, this is the lowest price that we've ever offered on a William Morris quilt. We have done a couple before. And because they keep selling out, which is incredibly frustrating to everybody, we've got more quantity today than we've ever had. So, and we've only, so far since we've been on so we've only managed to bring you a William Morris quill every three months. So that's fantastic, isn't it? Now in the box, you get lovely, if you want to buy it as a present from someone, very important, it's beautifully packaged. So it's got the picture, and you know, for us all us sewists out there, as we all are, big pictures of your finishing are very important because you're constantly looking at it and going, where does that square go? Got all your kit contents. Then if we open it up, the right way up, so it doesn't all fall out. Da -da. It's all beautiful. It's all wrapped in tissue paper. Yeah, Elia thought it was empty box, but no, it's black tissue paper. So in your box, let's take my box out of the way now, you get full instructions, which I'll go through in a minute. Nice big colour photo on the front. Now you'll notice that the fabric arrangement on the front, on the instructions and the box are slightly different. And the reason for that is pattern's exactly the same, fabrics are the same, but you can arrange them whichever way you want. So this gives you a couple of inspiration ideas because it's up to you how you arrange the fabrics. And that's why the picture on the box the fab exactly the same fabrics they're just in arranged in a different way because it's up to you but let's have a look what's inside let's look at this i'll do this nicely so don't rip the all the tissue paper so inside all beautifully wrapped up we have first of all a william morris charm pack now there are 42 10 inch squares let's have a look at them shall we just so you can see how beautiful they are now you can see some of these have appeared already. You can see on the quilt behind me, you've got these birds in here. So there's one of them. Look, they can see the bird on the quilt there. Second one, there he is. And then this is, that's the fabric that's in this one that's top of my pile. It's gorgeous, isn't it? So you've got birds, got two of them. Oh, actually no, I think we've got three of them. That's good. So we would get some birds. Love the lemons. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Got a couple, few lemons. Oh. Love this one. This is a real iconic William Morris print, isn't it? We've got like the beautiful sort of teals and blues. Really classic. We've got three of them, I think, actually. We've got three of each. 
lovely green one, but you can see how beautifully all of these colours and these prints go together. They're not just randomly chosen, they've been specifically chosen. I love that one. Look at the background, really deep, deep teal, but it's slightly mottled as well. It's not a solid background and it makes the um, flowers and the buds and the leaves really pop out. So when you cut this, because I'll talk you through it in a minute, but when you make the quilt, you cut each of these squares into different pieces. So these lovely prints show up. Don't forget, this quilt is brand new, never been on air before today and what's more exclusive to Sewing Street, beautiful oak leaf print. And what I love in this um, charm pack is you've got different levels of prints. So you've got your sort of more intense prints that are more of a background but with an interest and then you've got the larger prints so that when you cut them out to put into your quilt, some of the focal points like the birds will show up. I mean, look at the side, that print. It's got beautiful buds and even little birds as well. So some of these, they just pop out. And when you look at your quilt, every time you, when you've made, every time you look at it, you'll sort of see different details. Li I really like this next one. Again, you know, this is what I mean about the different um, scales of prints. This is a much more intense all over print, but it's so pretty. And then when you look at the quilt, you say, oh yeah, there's that, that one. There it is. And I've, I mean, I've gone through, I had to go through all the instructions yesterday. Very simple. I mean, very simple. But do you know what? I think sometimes the most stunning quilts are the simplest. And it's all about, although you're following a pattern and a design, you can put your own spin on it because it's up to you how you arrange the fabrics. Love this one. Look at the pairs of birds. So when you cut it, you'll get little snippets of them. Lovely, deep navy blue background on that one. Um, then we've got this gorgeous print. Now this you'll see, we've got a bigger piece of this in the kit as well. Lots of birds, birds and leaves. Ooh, the oak leaves in this lovely rusty autumn colour. Gorgeous, aren't they? I like those, you get three of them. And the good thing about getting three of each of these is that when you're arranging your squares, you can really go random and just go haphazard or you can really colour theme so that the colours move through the quill. You can start with the reds and the blues and move into the rusts or you can just go random. The, the quilt behind me is just completely random, but it's up to you. But because you've got three squares for each print, I love that one, um, then you can choose how your colours lay. This one looks lovely. I mean, it's it's not just red, is it? It's like your sort of deep, well, it's your William Morris raspberry red. It's beautiful, isn't it? Love that one. And then the final one is this really deep, rusty red as well. I love that one. So should we have a look at the quilt itself? Now I've shown you all the fabrics in it. I'm going to show you all the things. So, you know, where you've got like the lemons, there's the lemons there. Where you've got, you know, we had the blue, the cream background birds, and then we've got the navy background, and it's up to you which way up you put them as well. When you cut them, you can, you can choose how it lies. That lovely deep red print that I showed you last really frames those, and you can see that's used in the top square there as well. So when you put your squares across, you know, these are very random. But if you think, well, I want mine to be in a colour order, you could have all the reds across the top, you could move down through the colours, you could think, well, I'm just going to mix red and blue and green and cream. It's, it really, really is up to you. And then you've got all the borders. You start with this lovely sandy beige colour moving through to a grey, and then at the bottom, there's a deep sort of, not navy blue, more of a French blue, that borders those. And then the whole thing is bordered in um, lovely cream. And if you look at the binding here, around the edge, there's the binding. The binding is included in the kit, which I'll show you in, in, in a minute. So now, when you look at how beautiful that quilt is and how much fabric, so anyway, that's the um, charm pack. Let me show you what else. Remember, we've managed to get this 20 pounds off, 99.99 with two split pays. So in the kit as well, because we can't just give you that, we've got this lovely sort of stony beige color. That's used for the borders at the top of the quilt behind me. Then you've got gray. 
and that one is um, on the middle borders and then you've got the French blue which are the bottom borders and then you've got this lovely a very very soft pale grey it's more like a grey cream and that goes around the, all the background of the quilt and then you have this which is one of the ones that is in the charm pack this is specifically for the binding so this is all from the William Morris Orkney collection it's really mottled though isn't it let me turn around the right way isn't that lovely it's a really sort of navy but mottled with um i don't know a peach tree i don't know if it's a peach tree or a pomegranate tree and birds so the orkney collection is very um nature it's very trees birds flowers but this one piece is specifically for the binding because quite often in quilt kits you don't get the binding and i think it's really important i mean i know you can use a plane i mean you could actually use a plane for the binding and keep this bit for yourself couldn't you but by using this it obviously ties it all in because this is one of the fabrics that's in the charm pack so all you will need on top of that is the backing and the wadding and everything everything else including the binding is included in the kit so should we have a little look at the instructions so there we go remember i said that the photo on the instructions is slightly different to the one on the cover and that's purely down to fabric arrangement because it's up to you so it explains first of all what i like about the instructions is this you know you've got a photo those are the fabrics that you're going to get in yours and then those are the three border fabrics tells you exactly how much you're getting um, and then your the solid one that's used for the back um, the background area, and then your half a meter or forty six centimeters of the fabric that's used for the binding. It makes it so much easier, doesn't it? Because the you'll see here all the instructions are color coded. When you've seen all of that, you can see oh okay that makes perfect sense. So for the backing, if you want to buy it, because we have got some backing fabric. If you're going to use normal quilting width fabric, 110 centimetres wide, you'll need three and a half metres. Okay. And if you, um, for the wadding, you will need 58 by 68 inches. So we have got a beautiful red backing fabric. Love this red, that really picks up in the um, colours of the quilt. And obviously it's the backing and four metre bundle of crimson fabric, 26 pounds and 42 pence, save one pound 50. And I mean, and you know, and you often think, well, it's for the backing, does it matter? Well, yes, you've put all that effort into your quilt, have a beautiful backing. The, the beauty about using a um, plain backing is it doesn't matter about pattern matching, etc. It's just easier. So £26.42, that is more than enough fabric to use to back it. And you save £1.50 by buying it. It will come to you as a cut four metre piece. And it does blend beautifully with the colours and gives it a really nice stark contrast on the back. Um, for the wadding, the um, this is a fantastic quality. It's your cotton batting. So the one I've got is the heirloom wad in the cotton batting so this is 120 by 120 inches that is more than enough because you actually need um 56 58 by 68 so the beauty of buying this one is you will have some left over for other things as well but you don't want to be joining batting you can but oh, you don't really want to be joining batting there is enough here to do that and this is your 80% cotton, 20% polyester. Now the joy of this wadding is that it has the cotton feel to it, but the polyester means that you can wash it and gives it a little bit more strength. So what you do with this is that once you've made your quilt and you've layered it all up and you've quilted it and it's finished, you pop it in the washing machine on cold. I mean, I don't mean lukewarm, I mean cold wash. What happens then is that the fabrics and the, the body, they shrink very, very slightly. So it makes your quilt have that real sort of heirloom homemade look. And that's the beauty of this wadding. And I, the first time I ever did it, I was a bit scared and I actually sat in front of the washing machine looking, thinking, oh, I hope this doesn't go wrong. And I did follow the instructions, wash it in cold. It came out beautifully because it shrunk just very slightly and all the stitches sort of gathered. And that's the point of it, it's supposed to do that. So when you do that, don't worry. But this is fantastic quality. That's my favourite. But I've got one other wadding as well. Um, this one is super soft. So again, this one is more limited. This is 80, 80 20. I'm queen, I'm trying to see what there's. Has it got the um, actual size on it? 
Oh yeah, there we go. It's um, 90 by 108 inches. So again, that's more than enough. 44.99 for that one. And again, this is exactly the same. It's an 80-20 cotton polyester blend, which is the perfect thing. If you've spent the time making a quilt, using this sort of wadding is lovely. Right, so let's have a look through the instructions. <coughs> we know you love William Morris. Yes. <laughs> and when was the last time we had a William Morris quilt on? It was a while ago, actually. So what you do to start with, you get, so this layer cake is from the Orkney Fabric range. You start off very, very simply, explains, and there's pictures as well, about cutting all of the pieces. So you cut all of the pieces into the, I'm not going to go through all the sizes because that's all in here. And then you create squares. So you take, you cut your, um, each of your layer cake pieces, this one here, all of your layer cake pieces, you cut them into smaller pieces of squares and rectangles and big squares and small squares. And then um, when you've done that, so then look, there's the photos, really, really clear. Then you put all the borders around them. Then what it says, and I think this is really important, is to, because, you've, because you're putting the borders on the colours, is lay out the whole quilt. Lay it out on the floor or on a bed and have a look at it. Because although you might think you've laid it out random, you might end up with two colours together that you don't want, or you might end up with, you think, oh, I want more red at the top and at the bottom. So what I would do is please remember, do lay out the whole quilt and then just stand on a chair or something and with your phone take a photo so that you remember. And then this, after, once you've done that, it's really easy. You just follow the assembly and it's assembled in um, sort of a diagonally. So you, you see, you start the top corner. So you don't join it in rows that way. It's joined diagonally like this. Now, personally, if I was going to do it, I really would go random. The quilt that we've got behind me, the quilt that's in the picture, it is very random. But if you like the look of that, that's fine. Because if you look at the, f um, the picture on the front cover, and actually there's one inside as well, you can actually copy this exactly if you want yours to look like that. Totally up to you. Or what you can do is use this as inspiration to say, well, actually, I'd like that. And you could even drop numbers, number the blocks and say that's what I want there. It might make it a bit easier. Or photocopy this, so you, in case you don't want to draw on your instructions, and number them, you know, one, two, three, four, so that you know which block goes where. But the instructions are really good, but you can see it's very simple. All you're doing is cutting each of the blocks into smaller squares and rectangles and then you and the background fabrics and the the border fabrics you just cut those into rectangles it's a very simple quilt we've got no triangles and angles and i think the instructions are really good because they are all color coded so they're really easy and you know it's written by quilters it says things like which are really important to me Blocks should measure eight and a half by eight and a half unfinished because sometimes they don't say that and they think well do they mean eight inches because that's what it is after the seam allowances or do they mean that but they've really explained it very very clearly and how to do it but there's n there's no angles involved it really is just squares it's just it's joint diagonally the only thing is is that some of the background well the back even the background triangles you cut the square and then you cut it in half to make a triangle and that is the only angles involved so if you if you've used a sewing machine before so you know how to sew a straight line but you haven't assembled a quilt before this is perfectly achievable if you take it step by step and this is your first quilt you follow the instructions honestly this is not a difficult quilt at all I think 99.99 is an amazing price when you think that's 20 pounds off and you get all of this fabric so should we have a really nice a good look at it i'm going to lay it all out so remember you get three of each so you don't have to worry if you think oh i really like that one well, where am i going to put it you get three of all of them so i love the lemons gorgeous the orchid it does sort of feel very it's very um floral isn't it it feels it feels actually almost autumnal doesn't it the, but then that's the kind of the colors of william morris isn't it it's all with those very rich blues greens teals reds but remember this is exclusive to Sewing Street. You cannot get this anywhere else because it's been made for us. To our, 
to we you know we talk to the manufacturers who build the kilts kits for us how we want to do it what we want in it you know we put in specifications like we want the binding fabric in there because we know that's important and i know a lot of you think oh i like having that piece of binding fabric because i use some plain you get an extra piece of fabric that way but look at the colors all oh, you've got to do that the hardest part of this quilt is deciding what order you're going to put everything in but if you can't decide just copy the one on the box look at that one I love I love that when you look at um I don't know where I think I would if I was going to do mine I would sort it into color first so if you or you could sort it into print but I think I'd sort mine into color but isn't it lovely when you see um like these two same print but just different colours, but don't they blend to see? And the tonal value of the red and the tonal value of the blue are the same. They're quite soft, muted, not really, there's nothing primary at all. Um, and then if you look at this one, so a lot of the prints are the same, but in different colourways. Love the one with the birds. So if you've just joined me, where have you been? Where have you been? I've been here since eight. This is brand new William Morris quilt. We only managed to give you one quilt every three months. And so the 19 months that we've been live, 19 months, this is only our sixth William Morris quilt. Now they always sell out. We've never got enough stock of them. So this time we have got more stock than we've ever done before. And we've got it under a hundred. So it's only 99.99. But if you want to spread your payments, remember you can do split pay with this one. It's up to you. We don't make you, but you don't get charged any interest. So if you want to split it across two months, then you can. And look, there's look at that cord. That is the same fabric, this one here, that is used in the binding, which is lovely, isn't it? So it really ties together. They just haven't just put in a binding that will sort of go with it. Because look, there's your binding fabric, exactly the same as the one that was in your three charm pack. Beautiful. And actually, when you look at it, look at it as a whole. I need to have another look at this one because look the tree I know I want that you'd want to sort of frame that wouldn't you it's gorgeous but that's that's for the binding but you can but you can see how well it all blends together can't you I'll put that one back in the pile so it's nice and neat um, and there's the oak leaves which it's strange isn't it? they look so different look at it with the green one but don't they go together beautifully? And then it's like playing snap, isn't it? There's that one, which go, which is the same. Oh, we had a message in from Linda who said she's bought the last William Morris quilt and the instructions are really, really simple, really easy to use and really um, achievable. That's a really important word, isn't it? Achievable. You need to read a set of instructions and think, actually, I can do this. And honestly, if you had not made a quilt before and you think, I would love that on my um, wall, I'd like that on my bed, or I, I want to make a Christmas present for someone, I want to make something quite impressive, someone's got a special anniversary, you can do this, it honestly is achievable. If you've used a sewing machine before, so you think, I know how to sew in straight lines, um, and you think, well, or you've, or it's just about getting the measurements correct, double checking before you cut out, but it is perfectly achievable. So those two are the same, and then you've got this beautiful, I love, the deep rust one. You can see that one really pops out when you see it on the full quilt in the squares, can't you? So that's all the fabric. So remember you get 42 in this quilt, you get 42, shall I, shall I spread, put them all back together in a nice little pile? 42 10 inch squares. Oh, I'm not putting them in, a, there's no order. They're not going back in order. So 42, 10 inch squares, three fabrics for your borders, a, a fabric for the background and the matching fabric for the binding. Now half of the stock has already gone. So if you want this, honestly, if it's in your basket, you need to check out because you know what happens, you have it in your basket, you're thinking about it and then it goes. Half of the stock has already gone and we've still got the rest of the day to go. And the thing is, we have these specifically made for us. So once it's gone, it's gone. And I'm not sure when we'll have the next one. Well, it could be another three months, couldn't it, before we have the next one? So when it's gone, it's gone. So please do check out. 
Right, if you love Willie Morris and you want even more fabric, I've got a whole pile here. Look at that. Right, I'm going to go through them one by one. Let's go that, which way should we go? Let's go from the bottom. DIUI 40. Oh, I like this one. Now, this is from the Granada collection. It's called Bramble. This is half a metre. So, this is, if this, when we sell fabric by the half metre, what that means is, if you haven't shopped with us before, if you want more than a half a metre, just put that number of units in your basket. So, if you want... Um, a metre and a half, put three units in your basket and you will be sent it as a full cut piece. You won't be sent three half metre pieces. You will be sent a one and a half metre pre-cut, um, cut to order piece. We've got a massive warehouse full of people cutting fabric and they will cut it for you. So if you love this fabric, you think, actually, I'd like to back my quilt in that or I'd like to make myself a dress in that or, you know, I've got an idea for it then you can have whatever quantity you want. You just put it the number of units you want in your basket and it will be sent to you as a piece that's cut to your specification. So that's lovely, isn't it? Features these gorgeous big leaves and lovely bramble background, but it's a really lovely olive green. Right, that's that one. Next, we have um, S. Sci UI 79. Oh, this one's nice. This one is Rose Hip Indigo, again from the Granada collection. Half a metre again. This is now this is quilting weight fabric, obviously, your normal 44 inch, 112 centimetres wide. Lovely soft blue background. If you think I want to have a more of a solid, a low volume print, this is the one. It's better than using a solid pr uh, fabric, it works really well in sashings and borders and bindings because it's got that little bit of interest which gives it a bit more of a 3D quality. Lovely tealy blue colour. Rosehip Indigo. Okay, that's that one. Oh, I like this one. The next one is um, XMUI 65. M. And this one is called Bluebell from the Granada collection. This is one of the most popular. I think there's a way up to that. Yeah, that one. There we go. It's that way up. This is gorgeous, isn't it? It looks like block printed, doesn't it? And it is so William Morris. But it's um, the background is a very pale stone colour, more of a beigey colour. And then the actual printing is... It's like a mixture between navy and teal. It's funnily enough, when I look at it on screen, it almost looks charcoal, but it isn't. It's like a na deep navy teal colour. Should we open it out and show you? Look at, look at that. Gorgeous. I mean, dressmaking. Make a lovely dress, that, wouldn't it? It's absolutely stunning. But, you know, if you just want to make a pair of cushions... You just want to spruce up your sofa. You can make a pair of, you know, if you used a different fabric on the back, that'll make, a half a metre will make two cushions. Obviously, if you want the same material on the front and back, you'll only make one cushion from it. But for £7.49, for designer fabric, for the half metre, that's gorgeous, isn't it? Right, let me just fold that one up. Otherwise, we'll get confused. We don't get confused. Right, next one is um, XPUI 65. That's the same as the, um, that's the rose hip. Same as the indigo one that I showed you earlier. So look, if, you want, if you're thinking I want them to go together, that's the same as the indigo one I showed you a couple of minutes ago, but in a different colour. So that is rose hip in blush. Lovely, again, you've got that um, pale stone colour background and then a really gentle rusty red for the print that's that one next one oh this one's nice this is mrui 50 this one needs to be opened up see because you need to see this i don't know what the fruit are i wonder whether there's something like a what's it this one called apple i was gonna say it looks like a quince or something very very um very 
iconic William Morris this, isn't it? Where you've got the lovely leaf background and then you've always got the bigger leaves and then you've got apples, but these are all filled with tiny dots. It's like patterns within patterns within patterns. So beautiful for applique. I mean, use the fabric as a whole, buy it in, you know, in bigger quantities to make something larger or smaller, use it for applique. If you're doing some applique that is leaf and you want that kind of background, this is perfect. I love that. But you could use one of these for the binding, couldn't you, if you wanted to keep the other one. This one's lovely. They're all lovely, aren't they? Y-T-U-I-34. Okay. Right, there's only four of these available. That's lovely, isn't it? Really rich. There's only four units, there's only two metres of this available. That's lovely, isn't it? Really nice, deep navy background. It almost looks like pomegranates. It's quite regal, isn't it? But only two metres of that. Do you want that when you need to put that in your basket? Very, very limited. Right, quick, quick. I'm running out of time. So, oh, now I tell you what, this is the same. This is Apple again, OVUI 70 but in a different colourway. I love this colourway. The apples look really, look at that. That's apple in red, but obviously it's William Morris, so it's not red. It's a soft, soft no. Paul says, could you upholster a plane? No, you can't use cotton fabric for upholstery. Not if you were never going to sit on it. But it's William Morris red, isn't it? It's a really soft, vintage, faded red. But that, but if you're thinking you want to buy fabrics of the same design, look at the two of them together. How nice is that? And obviously, if, you, if you've forgotten the codes of ones that I've already shown you, just go on to sewingstreet.com, click on Watch Live, where if you scroll down, you will see all of these fabrics beneath, and then you can match up the, the ones you want to the codes. But love, I love that one. Wouldn't that make a nice maxi dress? Mmm. Or pyjama bottoms. Very posh. Let's think Christmas. Now look, this is one of the ones that's in the kit. Um, HGUI 95. There's only two and a half metres of this. This one is from the Orkney collection, obviously, because the whole kit is from the Orkney collection. It's called Oak, funnily enough. Orkney Oak Linen, but in linen. But it's beautiful, isn't it? But So if you like some of the, you know, the ones in the kit, this is one of the, one of those. Right, that's that one. I saw this one earlier. This is beautiful because this is a really big print. GLUI 15. Look at this. So this one is from the Granada collection. It's called The Brook. Small. I love that. Now that's only half of it, obviously. So if you go over the other side, that's what it looks like. But look at it, you've got deer drinking by the river that goes throughout the whole thing. What's quite clever about it, it does have a repeat print. So the river comes down to here and then it starts again. But the way that it's printed, although it repeats, it looks like the river continues throughout the whole piece of fabric. So if you were going to use this for dressmaking, I mean, maybe you're thinking, I just want to make a skirt or I want a really deep border on something. It does look like the river continues, despite the fact, you know, the fabric print goes from here to here. That's the size of the repeat. But doesn't it look like the river flows throughout the whole piece? So it's a very pictorial. You could even frame this. Nice piece of wall art, very, very cheap piece of wall beautiful as a wall hanging then you don't need to do much you could just buy a um, couple of meters of this and just quilt it lovely right we have got a few more so we've got don't worry we will go back for the, if you've missed the quilt and you've only just tuned in we will go back in it before yeah that's 86 now there's only three meters this one this again is called Honeysuckle and it's from the um, Granada collection. Again, lovely natural, well, all of these cream backgrounds, they're all like sort of a natural stone colour with some beautiful ocean blues. I love the pinks. All the reds and the pinks that are in the William Morris fabrics are so sort of muted and vintage, but they're just subtle. 
they so they easily sit with other soft furnishes and they easily go with other, other fabrics because there's nothing bright and stark about them. But I love that one. It's a genius, genius. Um, and we have another one. Oh, this is a very pretty one. This is um, 94. And this one is from the Granada collection called Jasmine. But isn't it pretty? Look at the tiny little flowers all on it. And it's a lovely, fresh, like um, eucalyptus minty green in the background. And then you've got these tiny, tiny little flowers. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Very, um, very fresh and springy. Actually, I'm going to skip past one to see the next one because the next one is the same fabric but in a different colorway this one is jriui04 and same fabric but the colors completely different this is this one is in blush just pretty pretty isn't it very sort of um country cottage kind of feel to it would go in most surroundings look very pretty in a bedroom or you know maybe you're thinking well, i want to make some gifts for people for christmas a couple of makeup bags or little wash bags or you want to use it as a lining for a pretty purse or something this is just sweet and lovely isn't it let me just show it to you with the other fab with the matching fabric don't they go well together exactly the same print and sometimes when you put the same prints with completely different colors it's just a really lovely contrast they're a nice thing to get if you just want half a meter because you're going to just make some little just a little t a tote bag i mean if you know if you went into your your national trust shop or one of those lovely posh places and you bought a tote bag um 19.99 isn't it but this seven seven ninety five or half a meter bargain but it is, you know, it's obviously designer fabric, but it's designer quality as well. It is beautiful. And then this is the final one. This is from the Granada. This is called Bluebell. Now, do you remember this one earlier? I'm just going through my little stash. Um, so this one is in gold. But remember there was one earlier that I showed you that was in indigo. Look, aren't they gorgeous? Love those together. They work really well because they're both soft. So that is all the William Morris fabric. So if you want any of it and you can't remember because I had to go through it reasonably quickly, then please just go onto the website. You'll see it all there with pictures and then you can choose. If you have any questions at all, you can phone our call centre and you can order on the phone if you don't want to order online. Uh, the phone number is 0800 001 4433, UK call centre and it's free. And they will help you. So if there's any you can't remember or you need any help, then go on to that. We have also got a few little William Morris gifts. So here's my tray of William Morris gifts. If you want more William Morris in your life or getting ahead for Christmas, little pill box. Let me show you this one. Look, beautiful William Morris print on the top. There we go. And look little pillbox there we go only 6.99 so if you're looking for a nice little present glasses case um i have got the one that end, ends in 39 first it's lovely this i don't know what the fabric is it's very soft it's not plastic it's fabric it's beautifully soft though <gasps> and look inside let me move my tray out of the way you get a glasses cloth let me show you look with there we go so you get that in there and that fabric is on the outside so it's really really soft again lovely little present even if it's for yourself that's golden lily if you fancy a red one instead strawberry thief absolutely classic and always the most popular again comes with glasses cloth how lovely is that right let me just pop that back in and the last glasses case is seaweed, which is Paul's favourite. Luckily, he wears glasses, so he can have one of these. We'll get you one for your secret Santa. We'll get you one for your secret Santa, Paul. He'll have forgotten by Christmas that we said that, so it's okay. So again, you get your glasses case and you get your cloth. 
There we go. So that's the um, William Morris. Now, there, there are ever William Morris items, and they're all on the website on the pre order because we've got a manicure set, a tray, which I'll put the Woolies back on, and a lap tray as well. However, the most important thing of the day for any of you who have missed it, I just want to go through it again, is this beautiful William Morris quilt that's hanging up behind me. Now, half of the stock has already flown out. It is $99.99. Everything that you need to make this quilt, other than the wadding and the backing, is in here. You've got all of the William Morris prints. You've got the background fabrics. You've got the binding fabric and full instructions. So you get these, the, all the instructions really simple, really easy to understand, and more importantly, really achievable. That You feel that when you read them, it's they're explained in such a simple way. It really is. There's no angles. It's all squares. I mean, it looks like it's all done triangular, but it isn't. It's all done as squares. But when you construct it, you construct it diagonally so it looks like you've cut all these complicated triangles but you haven't it's just squares and that's the beauty of quilts like this is they've been worked out that you can that you make it so that it's joined in that way so it looks like it's really complicated when it's not so in your kit you get this gorgeous layer cake so you get 42 10 inch squares should we have a look at them again put them in order that one, this is all from the Orkney collection, by the way. Look at that. And it's really lovely, isn't it, that you know in your kit is going to be all this beautiful William Morris fabric. You haven't got to go and try and source it. If you had to buy all this by the half metre and cut it, it would cost you way more. But because it's all been cut specifically, it's so much more economical. Then we've got um, the lemons. I love the lemons. So pretty. You've got a lot of balance of different print scales and colours here so there's all the so that's the creamy ones because I sort of put them in an order earlier all the ones with the creamy backgrounds there and then we've got all the greeny colour backgrounds and remember you get three of each print but look even those the, these are different shades of green they still blend really well. You've got the sort of the faded green and then the deeper green. I'm going to miss out the blues and the reds. Have I got any more greens? Yeah, and then we've got oak leaves in green. So that's the green collection. But even when you move from the cream to the green, the colours are still going through, aren't they? Then we get into the blues. I love that one. It's so detailed, isn't it? So detailed. When you look at it really closely, just move it like that, look how detailed it is. You know, and that's just the quality of the fabric, but it, it's the design, isn't it? Stock warning, stock warning. Mm. Right, everyone who's got it in their basket, if everyone checks out, we have only got 12 left. So if you've got it in your basket, you really need to check out. We have bought more this time than we've ever been managed to bring you before. It is brand new today. So if you've got it in your basket, you really need to check out. Right. Just only warning you because um, we don't want you to miss out. Hate you missing out. Paul is always missing out. He's always dressed, but, well, Paul, you need to get ahead and pre-order. But well, no sympathy. Told you before. Then you get that lovely blue one. So here's my blue collection. Honestly, I think I would actually spend more time sorting my fabrics out and deciding what order I was going to put in. And if you missed it earlier, I said, you know, the picture that you get inside your, at the back of your quilt, you get this picture. I can show you now. Um, of it. I would photocopy this and then I'd put numbers on each and I'd work out, right, which number am I going to have where? You could spend a wonderful afternoon just deciding because the instructions explain sew them together in whatever order you want. The, having the beige at the top, these borders, and then the grey and then the blue, you do do it in that order. But the prints inside, every one of these squares has um, three prints in it. Has a big square, little square, and two rectangles. So they all have three different prints. So you just got to decide what order. But the great thing is, is if you really can't, just follow the picture. So that's the blues. Right, and then we've got the reds. But it's not red, is it? Because it's William Morris. It's sort of a 
it's a vintage rusty red. Ten left. Oh, I've missed a blue when ev when everyone has checked out. Only ten left. I've missed a blue. I'll put the blue back in my blue collection. There we go. And then the red collection. So you've got that one, same as which is the which is the same as that blue one. Then we've got this deeper red. That one is Elliot's favourite. And that's the same as that one. And then the really sort of deep rusty red. And then the brown oak leaves we'll put in the same collection. So if you look at it now in groups like that, you can see how it really is in a colour group. There we go. So you've got your sort of creams, greens, blues and the reds. But when you mix them all up, it looks like that. But it's up to you how you do it. I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to try lots of different things. What you can do as well is they suggest is if you can't decide, just make up your squares randomly, but then lay them out and work out what you order before you put the borders on. So before you decide which, because the top two rows have obviously got the beigey colour borders, before you put those on, you can choose what order you're going to construct them in. Totally up to you. So that's the kit, but also you get the fabric. Well, I'll just tell you how much you get. You get the right amount of fabric anyway. It's like near about almost half a metre of the sort of beigey goldy colour. And that's used for the top row borders. And then you get this grey that's used for the middle row borders. But you see how this has been selected so it really complements the William Morris prints. It really makes them stand out. And then we've got this deep, deep tealy colour. That's for the bottom borders. And then I do like, normally, they people choose sort of white or cream for background. But this is like just the slightest hint of grey. It's like a silvery grey. It's like, and it is, I mean, it's a very deep cream, but it's more on the grey spectrum. But it's soft. It, it goes well. It complements the William Morris. Because the William Morris fabrics are such um, intense pattern. But they're all muted shades. They're not really whites and creams. Even the one that I said that has the cream background actually has a beigey background. So this beautifully complements it, as you can see from the quilt behind me. And then you get, yes, yeah, so look, you can see now, look at the background. The grey works so much better. If you put a white there, it'd be much too stark. And a cream, I just don't think would reflect. It wouldn't let the other fabric speak. So it just sits in the back. It's a really good choice, isn't it? And look, it's very simple, I mean, you can quilt it however you want, but they're very simple quilting. They've just quilted round the outsides of each block and then just done some diagonal lines around the outside. Very, it doesn't have to be anything intense. The fabric does all the work for you. Really, really achievable. And then don't forget, you get the half metre to do your binding. So your binding matches beautifully. Or keep that, keep that, make something with it and use a bit of plain from your stash. That's what I would, well, I don't know whether I would because actually that has been chosen for the binding and it goes well, but that's up to you, isn't it? So that is the beautiful quilt. Remember, brand new, brand new today, exclusive for, to Sewing Street. We've managed to take £20 off it because we know how much you love it, you know, and, um, and you know, why not? Why not? Who doesn't want to make a William Morris quilt? I'd quite like it. Split pay as well, forty nine ninety nine. So that's two payments. You pay one now, one in a month's time, but you will be sent it straight away. Um, there's no interest on that. It's just to make it um, an easier way for you to spread the payments. But this is certainly something, if I was thinking, which I really ought to get on with, planning my Christmas stitching. I always like to do one big project every Christmas. I think this will be the one for 99.99. I've only got to buy some wadding and backing. Probably already got some backing in my stash anyway. Just need a bit of wadding. And I think, you know, it depends how many hours you spend, but you could get this done. If you if you work in, in a few hours a day, you could get this done in a week. But well, the, the top of it anyway. Now, if everybody checks out who's got it in their baskets, we only have three left. Now, we're only saying that because we don't want you to miss out because we've got more stock than we've ever had before. But remember, you don't, it's not like other places where once you check out, you have to pay your postage again. You can check out as many times as you want. You will still only be charged one PMP of 3 95 So please do 
basket if it's in your basket check out and if you want it if you're thinking about it please because you know once we have other people coming on air it will be on the website they'll see it and it'll be gone it'll be gone we never managed to catch up. Anyway, thank you for joining me at 8 o'clock. After the break, we have Barbara coming up 9 o'clock and she is going to show us how to make these beautiful cushions. They're all printed, pre-printed panels, all exclusive to Sewing Street. And we're going to show you how to make them and more importantly, show you how to put a zip in a cushion. Look at the lovely hedgehog. So I'll see you back here in just a couple of minutes time with Cushion Making with Barbara. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts, but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learnt lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. of a crafting fix. There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Welcome back to Sewing Street. We're just talking about cups of tea. Now, do you know anyone who like doesn't empty the kettle and put fresh water in it? Well, Barbara and I were just talking about, I hate that. And you know, you're watching the telly and people come downstairs in the morning and they just turn the kettle on. Who would do that? Who would turn the kettle on with like water that sat in it all That's night? Mm, horrible. Yeah, but then it goes all like chlorine-y. I don't know. Anyway, I've just asked them if they make me a cup of tea, so I did have a conversation. Fresh water. 
So who else feels like that then? Who's ever, you know when you have that cupboard? Oh, horrible. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, we have got some beautiful panels for you today and we've got Barbara who's going to show you what to do with them. So I'm just going to run through the panels quickly. Morning, Barbara. Good morning. Yeah. Morning, morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Barbara's just bought the quilt kit, by the way. Very I excited. did. I oohed and ahed Oomed. and then just said, that's it. And just did it. it. Yeah, I need it. Well, you're lucky because you've got it there behind you so you can have a good look at it later yeah. as well. It's lovely. It is it's gorgeous. Mm. So let's go through the panels. Now we've got two different sorts, but different colourways. So let's start with this one. Now I love this one. This is called If Friends Were Flowers, I'd Pick You. Oh, nice. <laughs> I've got the pink and purple one, Paul, which is YLUU15. Now that's, that's just half the panel. Let me get the whole thing out. So these are exclusive to Sewing Street. You cannot buy these anywhere else. So on the panel, you've got... Well, it could, we called it a cushion, but you don't have to make a cushion with it. You can make a bag with it if you like. So there's the front. Now, you can leave it like that, or you can embellish it with embroidery or applique or quilting, which Barbara's going to talk about in a minute. You've also got the cushion back there. But do you know what's good about these? For 9 99 for the panel is you can make two cushions with that. So if you've got some fabric from your stash, whether it's a cream like the background or a green or a pink and purple, you can use your own fabric to the back and you've got two cushions. You've also got labels. So if you want to label it, you can embroider or write someone's name on that. And you've got spare fabric. Now, if you decide you want to make this panel into a tote bag instead, a square one, you could use this fabric for the handles. So you've got the front of your bag or cushion, back, bag or cushion, handles, or you can use this piece as something else entirely different. Matching little zip purse, makeup bag, all sorts of things. So that's that one, but we also have it in two other colorways. That one was pink and purple. This one is called red and yellow. I love this one. This is a bit like the, it's very William Morris colors this. Maybe I'm just to keep talking about William Morris, but look at the look at the reds and the yellows and the greens. They're that really sort of muted, soft hue. If friends with flowers, I pick you. So again, look, you've got the front. You said that nicely then. Mm. Hue, <laughs> hue. It's a funny word, isn't it? You just can't go you. You have to you have to say the H. Hue. And then you've got the back of the cushion, and then you've got the extra fabric strip there, and you've got the little labels that you can sew onto other makes. Made by me, this took ages. Do not sit on. Whenever I make something for anyone, I'll say this took ages, just remember that. <laughs> um, and then the final colourway in this one is blue and lilac. Very pretty, isn't it? That's Paul's favourite colour. That doesn't make it the best colour, Paul, it just makes it your favourite. So there's the front. And obviously you've got the back or remember, you know, two lovely cushions because if you had side by side on your bed, guest room, very pretty. That's what I would do and just use a bit of plain fabric for the back. Um, you've got this spare piece of fabric, which is ideal for smaller projects, book covers, uh, makeup purses, cosmetic bags or handles if you were going to um, make it into a bag instead. And obviously the little labels at the top. We've also got hedgehogs. Now, on pre-order, these have been really popular, which I'm not surprised about. They are so sweet. The first one, I've got it in two colourways. We've got a hedgehog and a squirrel, not two hedgehogs. This one is the hedgehog. Look at his little face. This has been the most popular on pre-order. So, Barbara's made a cushion from this one. Have you got a picture? Look. That's what it looks like when it's all made up. Brand new today. So, again, the same as the other one. You've got your cushion front here and you've got your cushion back here or you've got two cushions. Use just a bit of, uh, this is like a pale, very pale green, but you could use any colour on the back, like a linen or something. You've got two cushions. Then you've got three squares, which could be smaller cushions. Again, um, little bags, little gift bags would be nice. So you've got one that's got um, leaves. That one Barbara's made into a mini cushion. You've got a mini hedgehog. 
But you could use um, two of the, one on the front and the back, to make small gift bags, book cover. Mm. There's loads of different things. There's no instructions with this. This is purely a fabric panel. And then you have to, you can make them into whatever you like. But, you know, maybe you've bought somebody a little soap or a hand cream for Christmas and you want a little gift bag for it, for Hedgehog Love in particular. Then, you know, this is great. So you could, from this panel, make two cushions and three gift bags for 12 99 and you've got labels here as well, which are ideal for these makes that say hand stitched by, or you can use them for other makes. You can either embroider on them or just use a permanent marker pen. And then finally, we have the squivel. Elliot's trying to decide. Oh, I like the squirrel. And look, he's got acorns, obviously. Acorns all around his border. I love that. It's gorgeous, isn't it? It's like a watercolour painting. Now, these are exclusive to Sewing Street. You can't get these anywhere else. So there's the front of the cushion. Well, I don't think it's the front and back, actually. I think that's two cushions. It seems a waste to put that on the back. But, you know, if you don't want to use up other fabric, that is enough for the front and the back. Also, make brilliant tote bags. Then you've got three... If you want, you know, bags in the kitchen, it's lovely to have cotton bags to store things like bread or vegetables in. You know, for twelve ninety nine, you can make a whole set. A whole set. You've got fur cones in the top one, squirrel in the middle one, and then squirrel there, and then you've got the labels as well that you can put on things. Twelve ninety nine. So all you've got to do is decide squirrels or hedgehogs or both. Nice present as well for someone you know who started sewing or loves sewing. You know, for a little secret Santa or a small, you know, stocking present or just a little gift, a thank you present for someone who you know who loves sewing. Just give them one of these panels. Right. So, Barbara, where shall we start? Okay, so I am going to do the um, If Friends Were Flowers. Love that one. It's beautiful, isn't it? It is really so lovely, nice. isn't it? It's one of my favourite Which one have ones. you got there? The purple? I've got the purple and lilac one here. Right, yes, that was the first one. Pink, pink and oh, purple. Oh, pink and purple, Yeah, that's sorry. what it's called. Yeah, pink and purple. Yeah, I've got that one. Okay. So what I've done on here to embellish it... Um, I don't know if you can see there. I've yeah, Elliot's done coming in close, do like do a drone. Do do. <laughs> <laughs> so I've French knotted um, in Ooh, two different so colours. Um, I've done these ones in um, the same colour, but just mm. sort of mixed that up, oh, and I've done so it all lovely. the way round. It kind of brings the design to life, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. There we are. So I've just done it. On the same either side, and, and what you have could you do the blue bells. So I've used embroidery thread. Is I've just used normal stranded just, cotton. Yeah, just normal stranded cotton. Um, and I'll show you how to do one of these French yes, knots. Yes, please. If that's, um, so have you got all six strands there? So I've got chunky? all six strands. Right. You don't have to, because if you used obviously less, they'll be smaller. No, I like but them. But I kind I of think like they're nice and chunky, bulky. So I'm just gonna suck my thread <laughs> just pop the needle in there okay so when you do a french knot um are you all right there can you see yeah okay so we'll come up from the bottom there we so are. we're just going to get in close there we go okay lovely so we come up from the bottom right we hold the thread so that it's in place mm. and in your left hand we'll pull some of the white thread through. Where's that come from? Just random. Just a random piece of okay. cream. Okay. So then we hold the all of the threads in your left hand, needle in the right hand, or mm -hmm. if you're left-handed, other yeah. way around. And then you wrap the thread around the needle um, three times. You don't have to do it three times. I've done it three on this just because it gives it another... To make it chunky. Just a bit more chunky. Yeah. And then very slowly you take the end of the needle and you put it down as close to that hole that you, where you've come up, holding it quite tightly. Okay. There we are. And then you just pull down gently through the hole. You'll see it. There we go. And you just pull, 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 pull. There we are. Fab. That makes your French knot. 
Wow. So I'll do it again quickly. So up through And I guess there. by the time you've done the whole, if you've never done these before, by the time you've done the whole flower, you'll yeah, be an you're expert. Yeah, an expert in, <laughs> in French It's a very knots. good way of practising French knots. Yeah, it's it? very therapeutic as well. I was doing it in the hotel last night, so... So round three times. Yeah, you need to go, um, when you get close up, you need to go right a little bit. Okay, is that better? I don't know, when you, you, you better see it in a minute. There, there we go, are. perfect. Okay. And down through that hole. Mm -hmm. There we are. And then just pull gently. If you don't keep it quite tight, then you end up with um, sort of threads that stick out the top. Yeah. But that's how you do your... That's lovely, isn't it? It not. really so it just gives you it's that. It's like colouring something in, even though yeah. it's coloured already, isn't mm. it? And you could do all of the others. You could put some little sparkly bits, maybe in the centre. Yeah, the centre of the those flowers will look nice. I don't know what they are. Not sure about flowers. The they ones, anemones or it could pansies. be anemones. You could put yellow ones in the middle of those. Yeah, you could, couldn't you? That'd be nice. And and then I've just gone round the edge with um, of the. Um, Writing mm -hmm. just with a straight stitch. Oh, okay, just a little running just stitch. To, yeah, just to pop it out a little bit more. So with this one, what I decided to do with the um, the extra fabric. Oh yes, the yeah, that long strip was, that you get um, on the um, panel. I've cut it into three inch strips. Okay. And then stitched them together, and then I'm just going to. Runner. Oh, so is, there, is this nine inches then? Yeah. Oh, and then you join them all together to make so one I've, long. Yeah, so I've done okay. one big long one, and mm. then I've ironed it so that it's in half. Um, and I'm going to put a frill around the edge of oh, the nice. cushion, because that just give it a little bit more yeah. of a pop. So to do the, the, the frill on here, what I'll do is set the sewing machine with the longest stitch. Right. Um, and then just run it along the raw edge all the way okay. along. Um, so I'll just do that now and then I'll show you. So you don't sort of run on the end, you leave the ends free, don't go backwards and okay. forwards yeah. to secure so it. So some loose ends. Yeah. So I'll just run that along. It goes quick though, doesn't it? It's nice. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> of a really long stitch. So this colourway, because we have got this in three colourways, this is the most limited one, the pink and purple one. So if you like this cushion, we do have it, well, Barbara just finishes that, we do have it in three colourways. There's the pink and purple one that we've just been showing you. Um, we've then got the um, red and yellow one, which is this one here. There we go. Red and yellow, very muted, William Morris-esque. Is that a word? Of red and yellow. There's lots of you multi buying, but honestly, what brilliant presents for people. Loads of different things you can make with them. And then the final colourway is blue and lilac. That one's there. It's beautiful, isn't it? Very, very fresh, that one. So you go all the way along with your long stitch. I've just gone Sorry, all the way. That's okay. I've just <laughs> gone along with the, um, the long stitch. And then you take the uh, one of the top, the top thread, and then you can just sort of play around with it, look, so that it gives you that nice ruffle. So you just pull it, pull it, pull it. You could pleat it if you wanted to right, as well. Okay. I'll do that as well. So I'll do a little bit of this and then I'll... So you just pull it like this, look, and then it moves down the thread to give you that nice ruffle. Can you see that? Yep. I've got my um, Nanny Bailey's old Singer sewing machine in a, in a, in a table. Mm -hmm. you know, oh, right. An old oh, yeah, real. It's electric, but it's, it's an old mm -hmm. electric one. And it's got these feet on it. The feet are about the size of that sewing machine. And it's just <laughs> <laughs> they're huge. And it's got a, a ruffler in a box. Oh, wow. And it's absolutely amazing. And um, you put the thread through, and uh, sorry, put the cotton through, and it picks it up and puts these lovely little 
pleats in it. Oh, it's wow. amazing. It's I've never I've not I've seen not one seen on a one sewing machine on a a modern sewing machine. So actually pleats. So and actually sews as pleats. It goes. Yeah. The the it's at the foot is the size of the so it's huge right. it, it took me about okay. a day to work out how to actually get mm. it onto the sewing machine but once i did it it it's amazing and it then it just bleated for you yeah Fantastic. just went along I d I've, I've, I've never seen one of those yeah probably have lots of you saying oh yeah i've got one of those in my machine yeah it'd be I've nice to know if anybody one. else has yeah. got one but yeah I was if you've got a rough ruffle foot, a let ruffle us know. foot. i was very excited mm. <laughs> I suppose you've got to know, do you have to know therefore how much fabric you need? Yes, yeah, you'd have to work, mm. you'd work it all out. I put it on the bottom of an apron. I was making some 19 mm. sort of 50s style. And it just, wow. Yeah, and it just frilled all the way round. It was amazing. Fab. Yeah, it took, definitely took out of uh, doing this. Took all this. of that out Yeah. So you've just got some threads on here from the, the raw edge. So just snip those off so that you haven't got them catching in the in the sewing I'm just going to take those off take that one okay so that's what your frill will look like so you, so you can just the gather along. all the way along mm -hmm. okay okay so I'm just going to do this one side I think in that um ruffle there we go so because i'm going to put a zip into this one mm. um i would suggest you put the frill round first before you put the okay um and when you do the bottom part leave um about an inch or so just so that you've got somewhere to turn your um raw edge for the zip and so what we'll do as yes well. so if you want a zip for your cushion there we go cream conceal gazette that will go with all of them so if you want a zip there we go 2.99 okay so i'm just going to pin this on here and there's a picture of it <laughs> in case you don't know what it looks like that's <laughs> what it looks like that's a very good picture of a zip yeah, as well it's a very good picture of a zip <laughs> I'll just pin that on there. I was just thinking actually that um, yellow and orange one mm. uh, colourway there would look quite nice and kind of if you <laughs> mixed it in. What, the red and yellow one? Yeah. I know, it's lovely. So I said, well, really it's very nice. William Morrissey, isn't it? Yeah. It's it that is. sort of muted colour. So when you've bought your William Morris coat and you've made that, you can put that on the, on the sofa, you yeah. can put that over the back of the sofa. Or you could put it on the guest bed, but not yeah. invite anybody to and stay. And so <laughs> no one's allowed to sit on it. Yeah. Put it on your guest bed with this, pic, with this as well, but it is those very much those colours, mm. isn't it? You can put them in your room and say, I'm sleeping in the guest room. <laughs> so you pin it round. So I've just pinned it along that edge, look. Yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to stitch down here. Mm. and then that should turn it that way you could if you were doing an envelope back um you could put you do it all and then place the t one on the top right. but because we're going to put a zip in i don't want to put the, t the back on just yet i want to do the okay. all the way round okay so i'll just do this Part so where here. do you start with it? As so I'm just top? starting at the top and mm. then I'll cross over. I have left it slightly flatter here because otherwise you'll have quite a lot of bulk yes, to go true. through. So um, let's just change the stitch back down to 2.8. Actually, let's put that there. That would be easier. You can hear it just going over there. Like that gives it such a pretty edge, doesn't it? And it's, it's nice, nice that it? you've used the the same print as well, because you could mm. just use a plain, but it really blends in well, doesn't it? It makes it look... Um, well, when it's more matching like that with the smaller scales, 
makes it look very expensive, doesn't it? It does, a very luxurious. Very luxurious boutique <laughs> cushion. Okay. So I'll just turn that over so you can see that you get that nice edge oh, on there. Oh, that's so look. pretty, isn't it? Amazing. So that we could really do that. It, off, it does. It? So with this, I mean, you could leave it straight. You could have a nice, just a nice straight yeah, edge on it yeah. as well. If you don't want to gather yeah. it, that's true. Um, or you can just do it this way. So you can just put your pleats in. I have seen people do this with a fork, actually. Have you ever seen people I do that? I have, actually, yeah, where you sort of wrap a fork and then you flop it over and then you... And then I guess that you get an absolute... I've not done I've certainly watched people do it, but I guess you get a really even spaced yes. one, fork-sized, depending on what size fork you use. Yeah. I'm surprised nobody's made a tool, actually, that's like that. <laughs> I bet they have somewhere. Yeah. And they go, oh, yes, I had that in a cracker and I've no idea what it is. <laughs> it's a pleating fork. There we go. So I'm just folding they those. They should make sewing forks because you can use forks to put the ends on con um, continuous zips. You know, yeah. you get those ends on the, and you buy zips by the metre. Okay. The zip end and to put the slider on, you yeah, can use that, a fork. Yeah, that's a good idea, So isn't they should it? just have um, zip sewing forks. Okay, so it would be Barbara and Rebecca's sewing, sewing fork. fork. We'll <laughs> pattern it. <laughs> In two sizes. Yeah. So you right. just um, pleat and pin as you go. So you I'm just pleating and pinning as I go. Rather than pleating it on its own. Yeah. That makes it quicker, doesn't it? Easier. It does, yeah. It's a good idea. And you can do them so you can have them the opposite way mm. or you can do them. So I'm just, and you could do it as you go as well. So we'll just, just gonna go over that one. up to that one and then you can just do it this way look so you're folding it as you go just watch your fingers okay and just judge it yeah don't have to be um, perfectly because ruffles aren't really perfect are they as no. such Or you could use this as piping if you wanted to. I know. Well, it's good, isn't it? That, like you say, that because you can split this into three, you've got absolutely you've got loads, loads that, yeah. You? Okay, so that's your other way. I don't know how long that is. Quite long, isn't it? I'm going to measure it. It is, Because yeah. I've got a tape measure here. And a pig with no nose. Is it a bear? <laughs> there we go. So that's a different way of pleating it. So you've got, it's more... Folded rather than yeah, so you've got about two. Once you join that in three, you've got two meters. You have just loads. So you you know you think you've got like a cushion front, a cushion back, mm -hmm. two meters of binding, piping, ruffle, frill for nine ninety nine. And then we'll do a straight edge as well, just so there's <laughs> something different. Yes, make a sample cushion. Yeah. Make every edge different. Would look nice with them. Um, some lace around the edge as well, mm. you know. Or piping cord, mm. chunky edge. But you could make these into tote bags, couldn't you? You could. Quite nice. And then you could make a small one if you've got. I was thinking for the um, the squirrel one. You could mm. make if you've got a, a daughter. You could have like little matching. Matching, yes. Matching mummy and me bag. Yeah, mummy and me bags. <laughs> Which would be quite nice. I'd have to make dinosaur ones for my grandsons, I think. I wouldn't, <laughs> don't think they'd appreciate. Squirrels, they would. My son used to call them squibbles. 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 Oh, the squibble, mummy. Is that film, isn't it? Where they, I don't know what the film is where they go, squirrel. Because every time my dog does that, if it could speak, it would say that. Because <laughs> we have loads of squirrels in our garden. It was in up, is it? Squirrel. But then I was told the other day, I bought some bulbs for the garden. I have loads of squirrels because we've got beach trees. You can't oh, have nice. tulips if you've got squirrels. Because apparently... Are they poisonous? The squirrels, no. The squirrels eat oh. the bulbs. 
Oh. So if you plant tulip bulbs and you have lots of squirrels around you, they come along and they find them and they dig them up and they eat them. Oh, okay. So I didn't buy any tulips. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope that was right because I can't have any tulips because you've got too many squirrels in your garden. Except so that's a straight edge on there as well. So you mm -hmm. could just have a nice straight one. Yeah, okay. If you wanted to, just do two sort of strips. Lovely. So there we go. So right, before you move on to the zip, I'm just yeah. going to have a quick recap. So if you want to um, buy the cushion panel that Barbara is working with, that one is pink and purple. So that, the one on the screen at the moment is the red and yellow. It's coming up. It's coming up now. So you get the front that looks like this. It says, if friends were flowers, I'd pick you. Then you get the back of the cushion or you've got two cushions, one big and one, well, no, they're the same size, one big print. Let me show you. They're exactly the same size, but you've got one that's a bigger print. And then you've got a smaller version of that print. Now, if everyone checks out, this one has sold out. So if it's in your basket, you need to check out or it's gone. Um, then there's the red one, which we both said looks very William Morris. It's those very faded vintage reds and yellows and greens. And again, exactly the same design, just a different colour. Friends with flowers, I'd pick you. Then you've got the back of the cushion there. And then you've got this long strip that's 70 centimetres, a bit more than that, long so if you cut this into three 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 inch strips like the barbara did you've got two meters that can be a frill can be binding it can be handles whatever you want and then you've got the labels love the labels love the labels and don't forget you have all this white fabric as well so you could use that so what some people do is they use the white fabric to say line a handle and then you've got even more so that's the red and yellow only 9.99 lovely gift either panel as it was or made into something and then the final one in this colourway is blue and lilac. So the background on this is much crisper. It's very, very, you can see compared to the white background, it looks white, but it's a very, very pale icy blue. So it's much crisper, this one. And then you've got that's what the back looks like. Okay. French knots. Would yeah. look beautiful, wouldn't mm. it? Um, and then I'll just go through the, cush the squirrel and the hedgehog. So hedgehog first, which is this one. Oh, these are even, even. Hedgehogs are as popular as squirrels. So you've got, these squares are both 17 inches, which means if you've got a half inch seam, you'll actually get a 16 inch cushion. So you've got a hedgehog for the front, of your cushion or bag, hedgehog for the back, but really I wouldn't waste them. I'd use a plain fabric on the front and back. And we, I'll show you in a minute, we do have some plain fabrics by the half meter that will match. Then we've got, you get three squares that are 10 inches. So this one's got two oak leaves and a hedgehog. And then Squirrel, who has just gone into the lead. I like the Squirrel. It's really watercolour. Remember, these are exclusive to Sewing Street. You cannot buy these anywhere else. So you've got the Squirrel panel there with acorns all the way around the edge. That squirrel panel, 17 inches, and then you've got the three squirrels there. Oh, that one's got the pine cones on. Now, if you want some, um, if you want to make more of your panel, use some of plain fabric for the backing. So I have got three. Now, this green one, misty blue, which looks green, will go really well. This is the most limited one. Goes really well with the hedgehog doesn't he? But also, if you were wanting to use a backing fabric for any of the floral panels, it does go really well with the green of the leaves of those. So if you wanted it to back that, if you want to make more of the other panels, only 349 for half a metre. Now this is quilting weight cotton, so it's the same weight as the panels. It's beautiful Rose and Hubble quality, lovely, and we use this one all the time, but it's the same weight, so it's really important that it will match. Um, I've also got brown, brunette. So again, perfect for the squirrel or the hedgehog, probably not the flowers so much. That's half a metre. If you want more than half a metre, if you, put, if you want, say, a metre, put two as units in your basket and it will be cut for you and it will be sent you as a whole metre piece. 
So whenever you sell, see that we sell fabric by where it says 0.5 metres, you will be sent it as a whole cut piece, however much. So if you want 10 metres, put 20 units in your basket and you will get the whole thing. And then finally, just for a really neutral nude fabric, that's this one here. But that one goes beautifully with the squirrel. Let me get the squirrel out and show you. He's upside down. But, you know, they're the colours. That's the ups, that's the squirrel come, hanging off the tree. Okay. Right, so zips. Okay, so I'm going to put a zip into the back of, um, or in the bottom of our purple and pink right. one. Okay, so to do that, let's just turn that one up there. Um, I'm just going to turn that back to front. Make sure that your pattern is facing the right way up. Yeah. You don't want it upside down. And then I'm just going to turn it about an inch up and give it a little iron. So we've got a nice straight line for the, um, the zip to sit in. There we go. And then the same on this one. I'm just going to give that little frill an iron. So the graphics that are on the screen at the moment offer the blue and lilac cushion. Just because this one is this one is very limited. We've only got a couple of these left. But if you want the blue and lilac, which is the sort of the the fresher with the one with the sort of the more pale blue background, that's the blue and lilac, and that's the graphics that are in on the screen at the moment. Okay. So I've got a zip here. Mm -hmm. I brought a purple one from home, but so you can see you can see it. And then I'm going to open out the um, cushion piece and I'm just going to put the edge of that zip facing okay. towards the... Um, is that an ordinary zip? Or? This is just an ordinary right. zip. You could use an invisible zip yeah. if you wanted okay. to. It would be nice. Um, and then I'm just going to pin it into place just to keep it there. And I'm going to use that nice crease as the guide. Now you could use tape if you wanted to or you can use, um, you could tack it in place with a some cotton. So you're just yeah. lining up the, so I'm just the teeth with the crease? Yes. Right, there we go. So just to hold that in place, I've put the zipper foot on. So we're going to do this one first. I'm just going to feed that along. Just turn the little... There we go. was there <laughs> <laughs> okay there we are so when that zips up sorry am I jumping about too no, quick no, no, for it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> there we are so that will fold down look yeah nice and just be edge, hidden and just be hidden in the in the creases and then I will just match that up just make sure you leave your zip open I did it up last time, <laughs> and I'm just going to join. Oh, I see. So you match edge. the front. So I just match the yeah. front with the back. Again, you could tack it all in place so that it's all um, all there. And I'm just doing it on the edge of here this time. quite interesting to see how people put things in different oh it? yeah I know it's like people say oh how do you put in a zip or oh, I don't think I do it the right way well there's loads of different ways mm. to insert zips you know and it doesn't even if it's different sorts of zips there's, there's different ways 
and that's why it's a bit of a minefield because when you don't know how to do things you think oh i've got to learn the right way and then you yeah. watch all these youtube videos there's loads of different ways but that's fine because everyone does it differently sometimes i think i just wing it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear and then i think actually no i'm, I'm not really i'm no. doing it the way i'm supposed to do it <laughs> So with that one, okay. do you match it up to the raw edge? So I've just matched that one up okay. to the raw edge. And then I'm just going to put that, just move the zipper foot along. There we go. Just move that. And just feed that under there again so that you've got your zipper feet mm. under that little foot. So do you start, and you start stitching at the teeth? I do, right, yeah. Right, okay. And then to the other end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just sometimes you can't see that bit, so um, side check. Sounds like a train. It does, morning. doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's all fine, it's good. It's so quiet now though, aren't they? I remember yeah. I used to have to, I used to have a sewing machine and I lived in a terraced house and I didn't used to like sew off at like 10 o'clock at the night. My mum's like that. My mum doesn't so sew. so loud. I was worried that people would complain. She's got one that machine. sings and does all these amazing things now, but she, yeah, she doesn't sew after a certain mm. time because she doesn't want to wake the neighbours up. She needs a new sewing machine. Yeah. I then got a new <laughs> sewing machine. I was like, oh, wow. She did buy an embroidery machine as well, and that did the same thing. So, <laughs> right, there we go. So I've just done that one. And then that's our zip Ooh, let's inserting. Can we get can a close-up, Bob? There we go. And it's oh, just lovely. sort of hidden yeah, by no, that that's frill. Really nice. And then what, what, so what's next? What you would do then is take, make sure you've got all the frill on the inside. Yeah. And there we go. And then just make sure you pin it again. Lots of pinning. You could use quilt clips, actually. Oh, that's true. Well, That'd I suppose, if you, particularly if you've got really thick ruffle, yeah. because getting through all of that is. Yeah, we have got quilt clips if you want to use them. I think that we had that William Morris quilt. <laughs> Gotta love the quilt, it's beautiful. I'm not the world's best quilter either, but I shall definitely give that one a go. That's really achievable, mm. isn't it? As long as you can sew in a straight line. And if you can't, draw on the fabric. With the, and by the time you finish that quilt, you will be sewn in a straight mm. line. I was used, you know, if I'm doing a, or a seam allowance I'm not sure about, I'll just draw the line with an erasable pen on the fabric. That's a good idea. That's and then idea. you soon get to, because that's the hardest thing when you start sewing, is to be able to sew in a straight line. But if, you follow, if you're following a line, it's easy. It does help when you put your glasses on as well. <laughs> I find that, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I lost my glasses. So I bought some new ones and mm -hmm. I lost them a week later. I like those, those ones. Well, I bought two pairs, nice. thank goodness. Yeah. And, um, and then the other pair I lost after a week. I don't know oh. where they are. Well, I definitely have them in the service station. Yeah. So I think that's where they might still be. Yeah, they suit you. You, you've got a nice petite face though for nice. It's really hard glasses. to find glasses because my face is quite narrow. Can you imagine if I put them on? <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't look very. Well, good. in this bit, the bit, <laughs> the bit where my glasses go is really narrow, so I have to buy tiny glasses. Mm. So I have to buy some more now. I've yeah, lost. They're nice. These I are like fine, them. but you know, if you, if I've lost these, I've had it. Yeah, they're nice. My, my sewing career will be over. <laughs> Okay, so I've just quickly pinned it all the way around the mm -hmm. edges. And so where the zip is here, we just need to secure that zip in place. Right. Okay, so we're not, when you open it. Oh, so the, yeah, the end of the I've done it again. <laughs> Hang on. Technical issue. Right, you've got about 10 minutes left okay. for your demo anyway. Right. Just open that zip a little bit so I can get my hand in. Right. So yeah, we just need to make sure that we've, we've um, secured the end of the zip so that it doesn't pop off. Quickly change that. 
Oh, so now we're on a normal. So I've just changed the zipper for for the new one. Okay. So I've just closed the end, and I'm going from the bottom. Gently over the zip. There we go. And then we'll just lift oh, the okay. foot. Oh, make sure I've got that ruffle in there. There we go. Turn it again. Just following the line of the um, the ruffle that I put in, because otherwise you'll see all the stitching on the outside. Oh, put the foot down, Barbara. My machine automatically puts the foot down when you yes, start. Yes, so does mine. <laughs> when I stop, my foot goes down. My needle goes down and my foot goes up. And you forget, don't you, when you yeah. send a different machine. <coughs> and it cuts as well. Yeah. So when you stand on the back of the pedal, it cuts uh, the thread. You, you forget that you use another so. machine. But it's a bit like driving another car, isn't it? Mm. The indicator's on the other side. Well, we, we used to have a car that had six gears. Mm. We haven't had it for about 12 years, but I still drive my car like I've got six gears. <laughs> really? So I get told off quite a lot for that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Take, well, it takes a while to build a habit, but when you have done, it's really hard to break. Well, it, they do it? say it's is it is it if you do something ten times, te is it ten times is it? something like that? If you do it ten times over and over again, then you, you then that's it. Then that becomes your habit. Okay. However, it's not quite it's not quite um, true with my. Oh, Paul uh, says it's the same with food. If you eat it seven times. Oh, okay. What, so if you really don't like a food, you eat it seven times, and you'll like it. I don't think so. I don't know. I've never know. If you really don't like something, and you although eat it seven it's times, not really very many foods I don't like. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I don't like. I like quite. Mm. Kind of like but most things. But does everyone have something they really don't like? I think if you eat it seven times, you just feel sick. Yeah. Okay, so I've just stitched it all the way around. You would overlock this as well if you were at home um, with your sewing machine. Nice zigzag okay, edge for the nice. raw edges or if you've got an overlocker. Um, let's snip the corners and they give you a nice edge on that as well. There we do. Good, right. And then we'll just turn that through. Give it a little shake. There we go. So we've got a kind of a sample cushion. Yes, it is a sample because every, every every edge is different. Yeah. But that would be, we'll give it Perfect. a little press, so that would be your little... Yeah, no, that's lovely. Well, you can cushion. see what the different edges with the pleat yeah. or the gathered or the plain, what it looks like. There we go. I'm saying you can embellish it as well if yeah. you wanted to. That's lovely in the zip, it looks beautiful, yeah, really mm. neat at the bottom. There we go. It's beautiful. Nice and it sits nicely behind the frill as it well. It does, yeah. Lovely. It does. So, if we were going to do an envelope back, I think we've got about five minutes. Right, okay. So, with an envelope back, mm. now, because we've got two panels on our one, we're going to try and, um, this is my favourite one. Okay, the squirrels. <laughs> I'm going to keep this one as my front. Yeah. And I'm going to chop this one in half. Mm. <gasps> so, what we would do, where's me? Or you could just use plain fabric. Or you could use plain fabric, yeah. Okay, I'm just going to trim this in half quickly. I'm going to use one of these rulers. It's a rather large one, but... Oh, mm, squirrel is way. the most popular panel, panel of the hour. Wow, that's good. I love the squirrel, actually. I'm so sorry, I'm going to chop him in half now. I feel quite bad. Mm. A lot of people don't like squirrels, so they won't mind. Okay. <laughs> but I love squirrels. 
they run along the fences they're so sweet they drive you know we used to have one so my dad um <laughs> went fishing and had his lunch and a baby squirrel had somehow managed to get into his fishing box really so he brought it home <gasps> And I would it was have, tiny, yeah. it was like a oh, tiny, wow. tiny little thing. Mm. And my mum, um, we, they built this enormous cage in the front room, like in the alcoves where the fireplace was. Mm. And um, it lived in there for a very long time until it reached maturity. And then every time um, they let it out, it would attack you. So they, ha they said, oh, we're going to have to get, we're going to have to take it to the woods and, you know, let it go because it's... It used to sit in her pocket, and right. it, it was lovely. It looked peek out the top. It was beautiful, and then um, they attacked her. It, and then it, it got to reach maturity, <laughs> and then it just attacked. So if you went anywhere near it, it'd be like national lampoons, mm. you know, that like, <laughs> when it comes out of the wow. Christmas tree. So, <laughs> so uh, she, uh, they took it to the woods and let it go, and it obviously scurried mm. off to do its own thing, and. Um, a few weeks later, there was a thing in the newspaper about this squirrel in this woods that had kept jumping out at people. <laughs> so we were like, oh no, this is not good. <laughs> and that was your pet squirrel. <laughs> it was our pet squirrel. So, oh, yeah, we denied funny. all knowledge and knowing so no, no, that we had fancy. this. Fancy yeah. that. Mm. But it, yeah, it was lovely when it was little, but, but yeah, they're didn't... quite vicious. That's funny, isn't it? Yeah. So you I'm think just... it would be sort of domesticated wouldn't you yeah well it I obviously know. had you know it's feral f f it's feral hormones i don't know <laughs> but yeah just you know don't go in that woods because <laughs> it will jump out at you <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh dear funny. so i've just turned the t the um the edge up okay right. just so twice. yeah just twice if it was um plain fabric um you know, then it would. We've still got the squirrel, though. You can kind of still see yeah, him. Yeah, can still see him. So, and then you do the same again um, with this one. Now, I've left this top part is slightly smaller than this one, and the reason being is it has to overlap slightly. Right. So, but I'm just showing you how to do this. I probably wouldn't have used the squirrel, but. So I need to show you how to do the envelope back, so. Okay, so I've just turned that up again. And then what you would do is you layer over the top. So you've got one there, and then the one goes underneath, sorry. Can you see that? Let's take it off of there. So it'd be quite small. You could actually use one of the small panels for this, look. Because that's one of the oh small yeah, ones. That's so, so nice, isn't it? I'll probably do that actually, and then it won't be so. So I'm just going to pin this. And this is how you do your envelope. And you'd sew along here as well. Sorry. Actually, I'll do that just quickly. Okay. So yeah, turn it over, just hem it. And so then you sew turn it. it over and hem it. We'll quickly do that. Sorry, I thought I was like no, two right. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I regularly do that, Bob. I get to it and go, oh, yes. I've forgotten to show you how to. Completely missed that out. I am very terrible with time. If you tell me a time, I'll be there about half an hour later. Seems to be a family trait, that. <laughs> okay, right. So I've just hemmed that now, so you, it just keeps yeah, perfect. it in place. Yeah, perfect. We've only got a minute, so. Okay. That's nice. No, so you hem both of so them. So you hem both of them. Top one covers the bottom one. Right, okay. Okay. And then you just pin them in place. Like so. So it's kind of a tiny squirrel with a... <laughs> it's a legs and head, uh, legs yeah. and tail <laughs> part. And then with the smaller one, okay, I'm just going to pop that over the top. Right, okay, and then you okay. just sew it around. And you'd sew all the way around here, Lovely. obviously, it would be the same 
Brilliant. size and you turn it round and that would be your it. cushion. So well, thanks so much. So okay, we will you're see very you back in an hour with your lovely bags. You will, yes. Looking forward to that. It's the one I on am, the um, shelf yeah. behind you. They're not on pre-order just yet, um, but they will be. They will be. We just saw it at the moment. Paul's, Paul's just playing with them. But they will be on pre-order soon. So thank you so much. That's okay. You're very welcome. And we'll thank see you, you back here in an hour. You will. So I'm just going to run through the panels once. Should we do Hedgehog? Hedgehog. Right. There we go. So there's the Hedgehog. Now these are 17... There's two of them, 17 inches square. So if you use a half inch seam allowance, you've got a 16 inch square. Perfect. So this will make either a cushion front and a cushion back or two cushions. That's what I would do. I'd buy some plain fabric, use something in your stash and use that as a cushion. It would look beautiful quilted. So if you layered this with some um, plain backing fabric, then wadding in this, you could either echo quilt where you quilt just, you know, quarter of an inch outside the edge all the way around. Um, or you could quilt along all the lines or maybe just the eyes. You could embroider it. It's up to you. It depends how much detail you want to put in. It also make beautiful tote bags again if you used a bit of calico for the back you've then got two tote bags you've also got on these this panel three 10 inch squares which are perfect for book covers small gift bags small cushions what you could do you know with these is that if you wanted five cushions if you used like um, something really quite plain like a calico or a linen you could put a wider border around the edge of the smaller ones to make them the size of the bigger ones so then you've got five cushions for 12.99 and they will all go together beautifully uh, you know loads and loads of different things you can do i think that's fantastic value for money and don't forget you can't get these anywhere else brand new brand new brand new can be bought nowhere else squirrel most popular most popular i mean it's beautiful so brand new today and exclusive to Sewing Street. So you've got the squirrel on the front with the pine cones. You've got the squirrel with his acorns at the bottom. I love the acorn border. Again, if you wanted to make the cushion smaller, you could cut this off. You don't have to have the border on. You know, this is really, this is just the beginning of your imagination. You can do whatever you like with him. Then you've got three 10 inch squares, one with pine cones, one, Squirrel and one squirrel. I mean, it's lovely because that's the smaller version of this one. So they do match beautifully. Now, if you do want to make more of your panel and you want some plain fabrics to go with them, we've got these three plain fabrics. Now, the um, it's not called green. It's called misty blue, but it's sort of um, a sagey colour green, but it goes really well, particularly with the hedgehogs. If you wanted to use that as let me show you as borders or backing or binding. Now this is only 349 for half a metre. So if you bought half a metre of this and you bought the panel, then you've got your two cushions, two big cushions, and so a bit a bit left over as well. 349 and it is the same weight and it's the same quality and 100 percent cotton as the panel. So it will go together really well. We've also got it in brunette. So if you want the brunette, that will go, I mean, that would go with the hedgehog as well, but it'll go really well with the squirrel. Let me put it beside it so you can see. Then if you want to choose a plain fabric, it's a bit easier, isn't it? So there he is with the squirrel. That's the brunette. Now, if you want just a more neutral, this is called nude. If you want a nude squirrel, I need to put him straight. It's annoying me that's not straight. So that's what they look like. There we go. And if you want green, which I showed you earlier, that's what the green looks like. Oh, no, I don't like the green with it. No, no. Green's definitely with a hedgehog. But I like that one. That's lovely. But up to you. But those will go well. We've also got, um, I was mentioning before, Calico. If you go onto the website, type into Sewing Street Calico at the, top, at the top. We do sell Calico as well, and that will go really nice with this. Um, we've also got the floral panels. So we'll start with the pink, pink and purple. This is the pink and purple. Paul's just on the phone. When you're off the phone, Paul, could you just pop? <laughs> 9 99 Amazing. So that's the cushion front, and then that's the cushion back, 
and that's the smaller version of the front or again it's two cushions um the misty blue plain fabric that I had earlier will go really well with this if you want to have a look look how nicely that goes together look so if you want some plain fabric that works really well again a calico will work well and if you have a look at our plain fabrics ivory i think would be very good ivory or cream um, then we have the one that's red and yellow red and yellow again um the green would look that misty blue would look very nice with it because it is um those sort of muted natural colors very very popular this one don't forget to check out if you've got it in your basket it doesn't matter if you check out more than once you will still only be charged one pmp but a lot of you are multi buying with this and putting it in your baskets but if you don't check out someone will come along and take it out of your basket and it'll be gone and then the final one is the really crisp pretty springy one which is this one here and that one is called blue and lilac it's got a very very pale icy blue background just off-white like that shades of white paint stuff it's like that but blue and then that's the background and remember you've got the long strips which are which if you join three of them together if you cut it into three will be two meters so really long anyway after the break after the break it is bag making we have got lots of different fabrics tools patterns all different things all around bag, bag making so if you love bag making Come and join me in the next hour and I will show you a lot of things that you can, that will help and improve your bag, your finished bags. So I'll see you back here in a couple of minutes. In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Visit our program guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Hello, I'm Adele Rowland. You may have seen me on shows already. My passion is in dress making. I've been sewing now for about four years, completely self-taught. I've actually learnt a lot from the mistakes that I've made. In my normal day job, I'm actually a secondary school science teacher. And one of the things that dress making has brought is the conversation starter with my students about the dresses, the tops, everything that I've made. I have two young daughters and a wonderful husband as well. One secret or surprising fact about me is that I actually have a silver world medal for Irish dancing. My dressmaking tip, top tip is always remember your notches. Don't skip that part with dressmaking because those notches are very important to line up all of your seams. I can't wait to bring more dressmaking projects to you and get more people sewing. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Hello, 
I'm Adele Rowland. You may have seen me on shows already. My passion is in dressmaking. I've been sewing now for about four years, completely self-taught. I've actually learnt a lot from the mistakes that I've made. In my normal day job, I'm actually a secondary school science teacher and one of the things that dressmaking has brought is the conversation starter with my students about the dresses, the tops, everything that I've made. I have two young daughters and a wonderful husband as well. One secret or surprising fact about me is that I actually have a silver world medal for Irish dancing. My dressmaking tip, top tip is always remember your notches. Don't skip that part with dressmaking because those notches are very important to line up all of your seams. I can't wait to bring more dressmaking projects to you and get more people sewing. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. And welcome back to Sewing Street. So this hour is all about bags. Oh, I've got some lovely products here for you. I've been just going through them all. Um, backpacks. This is a brilliant book. Don't doesn't everyone love a backpack? Remember, I used to always have a handbag, but then I just I discovered mini backpacks, and ever since then I've only ever had a backpack. But back so backpacks are not just for children. They, but there's all sorts in here because often we use one when we go on holiday, don't we? Because it's a little, e little easy. You've got somewhere instead of a handbag and you can carry it on your back. But um, And children love them. But this is all by Debbie Shaw. Therefore, you know it's going to work, don't you? All of her books are brilliant. This one includes a full-size reusable template. So inside here are all the templates that you need for all the bags. And I love these. A lot of her books have them. I'm going to get them out to show you. So you can see what I mean. So it's not your template that's normal paper or cardboard. These are plastic. So what's fantastic about them is they've all got the lines in. So all you do is you place them on your fabric. They've all got different bits in, but you just draw along the lines. And then you've got, and, and because it's, you know, like normally you see these on paper and you have to trace them up. There's the curved flap, there's the round backpack. You can draw along that and then you just join them up. So, I mean, that's fantastic. So this book, 12 99 you get 15 backpack pack patterns. That's less than a pound a pattern. Oh, let's put it back in the right bag. And you get this um, plas reusable pas plastic template as well. That is incredible good, incredibly good value for money. It's like putting a greetings card back in when it sticks on it. So put that back in the flap. Right, so let's just have a quick go through this book because I've got lots of fabric and different bits and pieces that you could use to make from this. Oh, Bernadette said, excellent quality and great prices. Lovely book, very informative. Oh, these are reviews from our website. I mean, it is, well, you know, if you've ever used any of Debbie's patterns, you'll know how wonderful they are. I like that. So let's go through. This introduction about making bags, how to use the template, so important. You get given things, you have no idea to do it, but she explains exactly how to use her template. What sort of fabric you should use, fabric supports, you know, because there's so many different interfacings and waddings and what do you use for what and stabilizers. This explains it all. Threads, tools, all the different hardware and the techniques. Things like, you know, making a letterbox zip pocket which adds a beautiful touch to a bag. If you want sort of a, a almost concealed hid, hidden pocket inside, that's a lovely technique to use. Even how to put into magnetic snap fasteners. I love the even, the mistakes bit. What went wrong and what can I do? Oops. So here are the projects. Clip pocket, that's lovely, isn't it? It's all down to the fabric really, isn't it? You know, if you, if you used a, a child print fabric, that's a kid's backpack. If you use um, something more pastel, it could be a nursery one. If you use, you know, it's beautiful. This is like um, a curtain weight fabric. It, it completely changes it. So that's a little rux. I like that one. Clip pocket. But look at the photos, though. Very, very clear. Every single step. Um, then we've got the drawstring button pack pack. So a little bit simpler. Just button and a drawstring. Perfect for children. 
I like that one. School bags. The laminated crossover bag. So that one keeps that nice waterproof one. And you when you can wear it sort of a, a cross body. Or dog walking. Use that for your dog walking bag, couldn't you? Put all your little poo bags in. Piped rucksack, that's your very posh one. So this is like moving up a step. So rather than joining the pieces together, you put the piping in. That's lovely, isn't it? I like that one. Um, nautical backpack, going down the beach. But again, you know, it's called that because of the, the fabric. You can use whatever fabric you want, but this one's got eyelets in the top. I can't believe these working out at less than a pound per pattern. I love the bare pocket one. And all the templates for this are on that reusable template. Look, he's got a little knitted bear as well. Bare pocket one. I like the tweed. The tweed um, check looks lovely with this. It's just a simple drawstring. That's your PE bag, isn't it? So, you know, it's one of those first things you do when, you know, particularly if, you, if you're if you just starting or maybe you're teaching children to start sewing, it's one of the best things to start off this one. But I like this one. It's got the reinforced corners on it. Very, very simple. Quilted backpack. We're going up market a bit now. A bit posher. But all that is is just using the fabric and quilting at first. A, ra a bound one. Oh, that's beautiful. That gives it a really nice edge, doesn't it? Um, a bare one. Another children one's. I love this one. Is that the one that's... No, that's the one on the inside, isn't it? I think I don't know whether it's the um, whether it's the backpack or whether it's the fabric. It's beautiful. But look, there's a little bit of rickrack in there as well. Very stylish, isn't it? And isn't that lovely that you can, um, you know, you can make that in whatever fabric you want. And you've just so stylish. And what I would do as well, because they, they're all fully lined, is, you know, when you get those smaller pieces of fabric that are beautiful, really strong colours and really bright or with lovely prints, Perfect for the lining of a rucksack. Um, another drawstring one. So much in here. Oh, the bear backpack. That's really sweet, isn't it? It's lovely that you've got the mixtures of adults and children. A nice zip one. Keep that one keeps it absolutely safe and secure. That's a really good one. And if you're taking it on holidays, you want to be able to wear a backpack, but you want the security across the top. Um, and a convertible one. Oh, so this one, look, you either can have it as a tote bag with handles. If you if you're sh out shopping, but if you then if it gets a bit too full, it converts into a backpack as well. And that one there has got that um, letterbox zip on the back of it, and then a little extra. That's the little cosmetic bag to go in all of your backpacks. So what a fantastic book! Twelve ninety nine, fifteen um, projects, and a full size template. Marvellous. Right, we've got lots and lots of fabrics as well. Now, these are just gorgeous and perfect. We have used these before for bags and backpack projects, and they're perfect. So these are, the first one is FTTLJ16. Let me open it out so you can see. These come, they're already quilted. So this is silver. Look, it's tiny, like um, almost quarter of an inch square quilting. So the back of it is black. So you can use the back or the front. The good thing about this is that you don't really need to line a bag if you've made it with this because you've got the fabric on that side because it's black on one side. And then you can see there's like a silver coating on that side and it all comes pre-quilted. So if you're making a bag, it's perfect. Now this is really wide. I think it's 150 centimetres wide. So when you're working out how much you need, um, remember this is ever so wide. So you're going to make a lot of bags from half a metre. Now, this is sold by the half a metre as silver PU quilted fabric. But um, if you want more than half a metre, it, just, it will be cut to order. So if you know you need a metre and a half, put three units in your basket and it will be sent as that piece. So it, you won't be sent three half metres, it will be set as a continuous piece. So that's it in silver. Make a very nice space effect backpack. Love that. Imagine buying a backpack like that in a shop could be very, very expensive. Fantastic um, value for money. This one, um, VELJ17, is more of, it's called Champagne. It's, I was going to say it's like a sort of a rosy, um, a rosy gold colour. But it is, yeah, like a blush shade. It is Champagne. More, maybe um, a pink Champagne. 4.49, 4.49 for half a metre and it's a metre and a half wide and it's, you know, it's, you obviously, I mean, you might want to put a lining on it but you don't have to because you've got this lovely black on one side and it is then this very 
It's a very thin PU layer, very thin sort of PU layer. So it's not a thick, it's a very flexible, very easy to sew, but pre-quilted for 4 49 Actually, do you know what? This fabric would be great for fancy dress. You know, when you've got like a make a spaceman costume or something. Or jacket. I mean, yeah, we've, we have used this before, but you could make a jacket, skirt, handbag, backpack, all sorts of things. But brilliant for fancy dress at 4 49 And then finally, we've got it in pink. Exactly the same. Black on the back. This one's called Rose. It is more like a dusky pink. 4 49 pre-quilted, tiny little squares. That's a very, very good value for money, isn't it? 4 49 Nice, um, you can make yourself a nice, just a, a tote bag with this. I mean, be lovely as a structured backpack, but if you wanted, you know, like a big market shopper where it's sort of rectangular, where you box the corners, that'd be perfect. Very stylish shopping bag. Um, I haven't got another one. We're supposed to have another one. No. Right, I've also got, should we do these gorgeous, gorgeous linens? I've got a whole stack of beautiful linens here. In all colours. So let's start with, actually I like this colour. Can we start with this one? C A L J 17. Now these, I think as well, I haven't got my tape measure with me. These, I think, are they 140 centimetres wide? Yeah, this is, it's pewter. I, it look, I thought it was like a JD green, but it's called pewter. So it's grey, but it has that sort of bluish tint to it. So this is 140 centimetres wide. And it's, um, it's cotton canvas. It's not as thick as, you know, let me, you can see when I hold it like that. It's thicker than normal cotton, so it does have that canvas feel, but it's not super stiff. Really nice for out of bags, bag linings, but also really good for cushion backs because it's just got a little bit more weight to it than uh, a normal cotton fabric, but it's not your super stiff canvas, but we've got it in loads of colours. 3 99 for half a metre and it's 140 centimetres wide. Now we've only got three metres of this left. Again, we're selling this one by the half metre. So if you want more than a half metre, it will be cut to your order. So it will be sent as a whole piece. So that's pewter. Now all of these fabrics are the same. They're all 140 centimetres wide. They're all this lovely canvas, but a lovely quality, not super stiff. This one is black. Oh, that one's already sold out. They must have had that one on pre-order. Right. This is lovely, GMLJ30. This is a purple grey. They've called it charcoal. I would, yeah, this is, it's that kind of purpley. And in, in the way that this one, I said the pewter one was a bluey grey. This one is a more of a purpley grey. That one's charcoal. Again, available by the half metre. Beautiful for bag making, cushion backs, things where you want something a little bit more. A weekend holder it would be lovely for but it is lovely. Or even you can use this for dressmaking. If you're making um, a pinafore or an A-line skirt, particularly something for the autumn or the winter, this would be perfect for it because it's not, it's not like your super stiff canvas. It would be, be lovely for, you know, not a lightweight summer dress, but something with, that's a little bit more structured. So that's the charcoal one. Right, there's only 20 metres of that one left. So if you want that one, I know that sounds a lot, but it's the sort of thing when we only get down to 20 metres, mm, then it's going to go. But a lot of this has sold on pre-order. <gasps> Look at this. This one's called orange. This one should be called pumpkin. That's a super, that's fantastic colour, isn't it? That's lovely. But wouldn't that be lovely for dressmaking? Um, and if you want something to go with it, I would choose the pewter. If you want, um, if you're thinking about having them together, maybe you're making a bag and you want the bottom section in one colour and the top in another. The pewter goes beautifully with the orange. Right. I've got so many colours here. It's lovely, isn't it? I love this stuff. Um, beautiful. I wonder what this one's called. This is like a greeny yellow, like a citrine. 
Ochre, yep. Yes, so, oh, that one sold out. You've all been buying on pre-order. It was there and now is gone. Um, then we've got turquoise. This one ends in 83. It's teal. That's like, like a kingfisher blue, that one is. That's so vibrant. Love that one. Again, 140 centimetres wide, 100% cotton. Is it, is what's, is it 100% cotton? Just check that. I think it might have a bit of linen. I can't remember. Oh, it is 100% cotton. I just didn't want to say that if I wasn't sure. 100% cotton, but it's a lovely, it's, it's not your super stiff canvas. Let me just, let me just give you a little waft. So it's two, 230 grams, but that means per square metre. So if you think um, the, the normal cotton that we sell is about 140, 150, this is 230. So it's not your super stiff canvas, so therefore it can be used for dressmaking. Pinafore. Nice, wouldn't it? Right, that's the turquoise. Then I've got it teal, sorry. And then I've got it in a very pale icy blue. That's lovely, isn't it? Uh, yes. Sky blue, this one is called. Very limited stock on this one. I cannot believe the price of this, 3 99 You know, bearing in mind it's 140. 140 centimetres wide and it is gorgeous. Do you know, it really would be lovely for embroidery. If, particularly if you do machine embroidery where you need your fabric to be a little heavier weight. It's not the easiest fabric to get hold of, um, for, particularly for machine embroidery where you need it heavier. Or even if you, you can use normal quilting weight cotton for embroidery, but if you've got something with a bit of a weight, it takes the stitches better. It doesn't pull, it doesn't um, pucker when you stitch. So if you like embroidery, I would invest in some of this because this is absolutely the perfect weight for it. Beautiful. So that is sky blue. Right. Should we do, I wonder, is this one just grey? LEJ04. This is silver. Oh, sold out. This is all gone on pre-order. This is the problem with pre-order. The great thing about pre-order is that you can get ahead. Maybe you should just start with the ones that we've got. Oh, I like that one. This one's seeded. Have we got this one? QXLJ18. There's only four metres now. Isn't this one? You have to get in very close. This has that calico look to it because it's got the natural seeded in it. You know, like the calico has these tiny seeds. It's got that little sort of slight fleck. So it looks like um, a seeded calico. That is beautiful. So you could use this instead of more heavyweight calico because it does have a lovely soft feel to it as well. This is perfect for embroidering. But nice bag. You know, imagine a... A uh, backpack in this, really stylish, clean lines. You could bind it then, or pipe it. ZPLJ63. This is just white. Yeah. Oh no, 83, sorry. Somebody had rubbed out the eight. <gasps> just confusing. ZPLJ83. <laughs> Only six metres. Oh, this one is ivory. So it's just slightly off-white. But there's only six metres left of this one. So if you want that beautiful, clean white, it would look lovely. I mean, there's a great thing about ivory. It goes with everything. Team with any of the other colours if you want, like, a two-tone effect to your bag. Or you could use it as a lining. Because if, if you put this as a lining into um, another bag that's got a lighter weight fabric, it gives it structure without having to use the stabilisers. So quite often that's quite a good technique for bag making. If you've got maybe a quilting weight cotton on the inside, but you want a bit of structure, then use something like a canvas to line it and it will give it more structure. But 3 99 Right, CFLJ16. Let's see if we've got any of that one. That's a lovely... Lavender, that's sold out. CWLJ47. 
I'm not going to open it this time. Only five metres of this in lilac. That's like a beautiful, dusty lilac shade. It's ever so gentle. There's nothing bright about that one at all. Very sort of vintage cottage garden lilac kind of colour. Is that a good description? <laughs> vintage cottage gardeny. 3.99, 140 centimetres wide. And the final one is AYLJ83. AYLJ83. Pink. Pink. Very pretty, that one. Very sort of that very pale rose colour. Very, very pretty pink. Very nice if you want to make little nursery bags for a girl. Or just a pretty, would look very nice with grey actually. I love silver and grey. I love um, pink and grey together. Doesn't don't they, they look nice together? Beautiful, very classy. Love those colours. So those are all our canvas fabrics. Now, if you've missed any of those as I was going through them, just um, click on Watch Live. What to say? Lovely, delicate colour, good quality fabric at a great price from Sharon in Cumbria. Thank you. That's a lovely review. I want a message as well. I use this fabric all the time in making bags as lining. It irons beautifully from Penny. Well, thank you for that. Tot absolutely, because I think it is really good. It gives it a bit more structure. Or even if you're using on the outside and the inside, you don't then have to use as much stabiliser or interfacing because it is, and it, it's beautiful fabric because it's 100% cotton, but it's got that weight. So if there's any that you've missed, because we have got quite a few of them, if you click on Watch Live on sewingstreet.com and you scroll down, all the fabrics that I've gone through will be on there. So I know I did run through. We have got lots of colours and some have sold out and some haven't. Um, the PV, oh yes, the PVC. Yeah, I could do that next. Then click on Watch Live and scroll down. You will see all the ones that we've got in stock left. And remember that we will cut it for you to your specifications. So if you want more than half a metre, just put that number of units in your basket and it will be sent to you as a whole piece, which is quite important if you're making a really big bag. Um, this one, that's not glittery. Oh, no, I haven't. Oh, I'm not sure we're missing some fabric. So we've got the PVC, yes. The code on this one is RBLJ73. This is now, I've got a pattern as well, I'll show you in a minute that, we'll, that you can use with this. This is brilliant. I always think of, actually it smells like, you know when you go to a camping shop and they have, yeah, <laughs> you have all the tents set up. It reminds me of being a child and we'd go, always spend like a rainy Sunday in a camping shop and it smells exactly like that. It's like camping windows, but it's brilliant for bags. You can use it for like clear pockets in the bag. Um, you know those really trendy bags that are just made out of this clear PVC and then they put straps on them and then you can make a fabric bag that sits inside and that means that you can change the colour of your bag every day. But this is only 2 99 for half a meter, got loads of reviews on it. Look at this one, great quality PVC and very easy to sew with either by hand or machine. Yeah, it does go through the machine really well. You will need to use a Teflon or a roller foot with it because it will stick, but it will go through your machine. I love using this for pencil cases and zipper pouches. This is my second purchase of this product. It's brilliant. I mean, I think 2 dollars What's the width on it? Must be 150. I think it's 150 centimeters wide. But when you want to make um, something clear, you know, um, you always have to when you remember doing your exams. If we ever go, the kids ever get to do exams again. Um, it's 130 centimeters. Sorry, 130 centimeters wide. You have to have a clear pencil case. But good for luggage labels. For things like luggage labels, it'd be absolutely ideal for. Um, Loads of things, but I've actually, I'm going to do the pattern next because the pattern is DHWL98. Now, I'm going to do this pattern. This is from the wonderful Wendy Orlando from the Craft Deco, who, does, who has used this um, PU for this pattern, the clear storage bags. So, it's nice to see, and look at, look at all the pictures, exactly how to make it. So, it's all got... Um, it's all got clear sections in it 
for storing different things in, whether you've got, this one's got shoes in, you've got all your makeup in. So, you know, and when you go, you know, when you go on plane and you have to have a plastic bag with everything is you could use one of these so it's use a bit of fabric so in this you need half a meter of the clear pvc so you'd need that two half meters of fabric and two 18 or 20 inch zips so if you buy the half meter of pvc here and the instructions she shows you exactly how to make these beautiful clear storage bags 9.99 for the set of instructions Add some ease into your life with these handy see-through accessories. So you just need half a metre of this, but it is perfect. It will go through the machine, but you will need to use um, a Teflon and, or a roller foot. In fact, I was talking to Barbara about that. We're going to talk about that in the next hour, about different feet that you can use with PUs and PVCs. Right, which one should we do next? Right, quickly, right, I've just, Paul's just told me, we have only got a few, right, we have only got 15 left of the William Morris quilt that's hanging behind me here, this thing of glory, be thing of beauty, um, there's 28 people who've got them in baskets and we've only got 15 left, so if you want the William Morris kit, you need to check out. Now, this is 99.99. It should be 119 pounds 99, but we've managed to get it a special price for you today. In the kit is everything that you need to make the quilt, except for the backing and the wadding. But you have got William Morris prints from the Orkney collection. You've got a pack of 42 10 inch squares, which are all the beautiful prints in it. You've got the, um, the border fabrics, which is the stone, the grey and the blue. And you've got the background fabric, which is a beautiful pale grey. And you've got the binding fabric. Now, this is a really achievable quilt. If you watched at eight o'clock, you'll see I went through the instructions for it. It's really simple to do because there are no angles involved in it. There's a few triangles around the edge that are just sewn in. But the way that it's done, it looks like it's all um, diamonds, but it isn't. It's all squares, but it's joined from one end, from one corner to the other. So it looks actually a lot more complex than it is. So if, you, if you've used a sewing machine, you've done a bit of sewing, you'd love to make a quilt, this is very achievable for a first quilt because it is just squares and rectangles joined together. And there's a lot of repetition in it as well. So your first square, you think, okay, I've got to match up, make sure the corners match your second one. By the time you've got to your fifth square, you'll be an expert. But everything you need is in here. We've had it put together exclusively for us. You can't get it anywhere else either. 1999. The finished quilt is 127 by 152 centimetres. Now, because it's 99.99, we can give it to you, offer it to you, give it, I'd like to say give it to you, offer it to you on split pay. That means that you can have two equal payments of 49.99. That's interest free. So the way it works is you put your order in, you don't need to have split pay, you can choose that point at checkout. But if you do choose it and you want to spread the payment, We'll take 49.99 off you. You will get sent it straight away and the next month we'll take the next 49.99. So you don't have to worry that, oh, I've got to wait for two months to get it. You will get it. So it'll be paid off by November. But some people, we've had a lot of us who've asked us saying, you know, for the, the products that we have that's slightly higher price, can I spread my payment? So we don't charge you interest. It just makes it easier. But isn't it beautiful? It features um, the most gorgeous, well, William Morris, absolute classic there are only 13 left of these and there are 30 people with it in their basket so if you've got it in your basket please do check out because if somebody else comes in and puts it in their basket and check out um then i don't know whether we'll get this one back we only get them about every three months because we do have them made exclusively for us so it does take time the company making for us they have to select the fabrics they have to make the design they have to get someone to make the quilt it does take time and it's the only way that we can get them for you at this fantastic price because we know you love we know you love william morris it's gorgeous in fact while barbara was in the room waiting to come in she bought herself one Mind you, she had seen it when she came in. And when you see it for real, I mean, it is absolutely stunning. I love the way you start off all with this sort of stone beige colour borders here. So it's all the same fabric. You choose the layout. Then you move down to the grey borders and then right down at the bottom to the blue. And then this background fabric is a lovely, very, very subtle hint of grey. 
and then it's all bound in a matching fabric. So you get half a metre of that in your kit, but you could actually use your own fabric and keep that half a metre. Anyway, just to warn you that we have more... 35 people have got it in their baskets. That's absolutely fine. Just, just you, I don't want you to miss out. And we've actually bought more this time. Every time we do, we buy more. So we don't want you to miss out. So I thought I'd just warn you now, if you want this beautiful quilt, then um, you need to get checking out. It's lovely, isn't it? And the instructions are really good. And, we, and I was chatting to Barbara about it before. And we both said, yeah, this is, this is something that you could attempt as my first quilt. What a fantastic present to yourself. No, and what a lovely present to give someone. And, and it shows from this, actually, even if you're not a great quilter, there's not a lot of quilting on this, really. You can just stitch along the lines of the joins. It'll take you more time to decide where you're going to put the fabrics than it will to make the quilt. It's beautiful, isn't it? So please check out if it's in your basket, otherwise it will go to somebody else. And, you know, it's hanging behind me all morning as, you know, it will get it or regret it. Gosh, I feel like I'm on a market stall, Paul. I'm not saying get it or regret it. <laughs> right, Paul, next. What would you like to do next? Oh, look. Look at these. Should we do the bag sets? Now, these are by the wonderful um, Becky Alexander fabric. Um, fabric, Becky, I'm sorry, Becky, if you want to. Becky Alexander Frost. I suddenly, I think Paul said fabric in my head. So this in here, this is the Queenie bag set. Now, I love this because you know what it's like. You see a pattern for make it in a bag and you know you're never going to be able to find all the bits you need. But Becky has put together these amazing packs. You just provide your own fabric. So in the pack is the zip and all the pieces you need and the pattern. So we'll just take it out and then you can really see. So you, you, all you have to do then is provide the fabric and the interfacing for this, but all the hardware for making them is inside. Oh, I think I need to take the whole thing out, that is the problem. So this is for making the queenie bag, isn't this lovely? So she's got a bit of the, um, like a rosy PU, some plain fabric. But it's got, you see how this bag has got that lovely, um, the point called the corner piece, that's in the hardware set, because that's not the easiest thing to find. The clasp on this bag, because there are three different bags here, the clasp on that bag is in here, all the loops, everything that you need to make it, and it's all in here. All the instructions with brilliant photos, There we go, look at that. It's really very, very clear exactly how to make it. You've got the full size pattern pieces for cutting out. Clip it all together. It does tell you in here, it's even got the zip. Everything inside, just the fabric and the interfacing you know to provide. <coughs> provide yourself. But this is often the hardest thing, isn't it? It's getting all this hardware and there's so many bits and pieces in there clasps and corners, particularly the corners, they're not very easy to get. So you can make all three bags, two small ones and the large handbag, and you just need it, like half a metre of main fabric, quarter metre contrast, you know, this is small amounts of fabric, but what I like about this, like she's used some Tudor pink here, you can use to highlight certain areas, you know, your favourite, small pieces of your favourite fabrics. So these three bags, you've got all the hardware to make all of those are in there. So that's the Queenie bag set. Um, I'll put it on, I'll put it away later because you know what's going to happen. Right, the next one is the Walk With Me bag. So let me open this one so you can see. And and again, you've got everything you need in here. So she spent the time, she's done all the hard work for you. So in the path, this is the pattern. Gosh, there's so much in here. Oh, isn't that lovely? Right, I'm going to have to get the pattern out so you can see it in detail. So this is $39.99. And this is basically the, the pattern and all the hardware. The rest of it is um, the fabric. So in here, you get the paper pattern with the pattern sheet. You get the magnet, two magnetic snaps, the piece of plastic canvas. That goes on the base of your bag. Um, bias binding. So she's 
sourced all the things that aren't that easy to find. You've got D-rings, lobster clasps, strap sliders, um, a zip. Oh, you've got the... the ter oh, that's nice, isn't it? So you've got a number five zip. Number five zip is slightly thicker and it's got all of the sliders already attached to it and a zip, this zip and a handbag tag and a metal zip end and so everything you need is in here but look at the bag oh there's the bag there that's it in a different fabric that's lovely isn't it oh that's in the alice in wonderland so isn't that stylish so look there you've got the the zip that's down the side of that would be really hard this if you want to watch back and see um becky demonstrate this this was on the 14th of july so if you go onto youtube you can pick it up from there but you see that lovely, um, the black zip that I had with the slide, the three sliders, that's used there. And even that little label that's on, so this is the, the one with the um, sliders, because you use it in different places, but it's got the sliders already attached to it. And on the, um, the image of the bag, you saw there was a, a little metal tag that says handmade. That's in the pack as well. So you have got everything you need, even that little bit of bias binding across the top of the pocket, that's in the kit. And the little piece of plastic canvas for the bag base. So you don't need, you know, 39.99, but all you're going to need is three quarters of a metre of outer fabric, half a metre of contrast and three quarters of a metre of lining. A bit, you know, you need a little bit of fleece and interfacing, but look with this one, she's used beautiful one a review there love love becky's designs and making her bags so easy to follow brilliant oh thank you diane that's a wonderful review but they are they're really easy to follow and she has so many photos and you've got the full size templates but it's so nice isn't it to have things like this zip are so hard to source to get exactly the right zip because it does need to be a number five zip so that it's you know a bit heavier duty and to be able to get the hardware and the plastic canvas and the binding, she's made it easy for you. And honestly, her bags really do work. Right, I'm just going to try and put that back in. Yes. Right, just packing it all back in. Oh, I'll lose it. I don't want to lose it. Don't, don't want to lose it all. Right, and then stick it back. Because that one I haven't put back together. Um, which one, sorry? Right. Oh, I've got another book. Another book. Sewers, sew a bag. A beginner's guide to hand sewing. Mm. Right, let's have a look through. So we've got at the beginning. Hand sewing basics, tools and materials. Welcome to the wonderful world of sewing. That should be our tagline, shouldn't it? Welcome to the wonderful world of sewingstreet.com. So, what can you sew by hand? So, tools and materials. A lot of people really are taking up hand sewing now. It's that sort of mindful, glorious thing. And the fact you can sit in front of the telly. That's, that's what appeals to me. All the things you need. So, if you're new to hand sewing and you think, well, I don't even know where to start with this, or what a lovely little present or a little stocking filler for Christmas. You know, you know you've got a friend, everyone's got a friend, goes, well, I'd love to be able to sew, but I don't know how to. This is Beginner's Guide to Hand Sewing. This will get them started. So, you've got all the hand tools that you need. You could even buy them a few of the little tools, like a little pair of scissors and the pins. And it really is written with beginners in mind. So this is all the tools you need, all the different materials. Then we get onto fabrics. So, you know, a little fat quarter bundle with this would be lovely. Have a look on the website. We've got loads and loads of fat quarter bundles. There's only six William Morris kits left, by the way. Stock update, only six left. Hurry up. So look, here's all the basic stitches. Slip stitch, running stitch, whip stitch, ladder stitch. So this is the stitches that you use for um, finishing off things joining things together. So look, how to do a basic running stitch and back stitch. I mean, this is really clear, really easy to understand. Lovely close-up photos. And these are the stitches that you need for things like dressmaking or, you know, hemming, slip stitch. That's lovely, you know, when you need to sew up a gap, when you turn something right sides out and they say, slip stitch the turning gap closed. This is how you do slip stitch. And it tells you exactly 
Ladder stitch, perfect for holding two pieces of fabric together where you've got a turned over edge. Like, you know, when you've um, toys, if you sew up at the back of a toy, you would use ladder stitch for that. Tying knots, how to, how to stitch with a knot at the beginning. So now we've got onto a project, how to sew a basic clutch. And this is by hand, because a lot of people get put off, they go, I haven't got a sewing machine, don't know how to do that. You can make yourself a basic clutch by hand. Look, really shows you how to make a pattern. So therefore you can make it any size you want. It's, you know, it does start from the beginning, even pinning your pattern on, cutting it out and then sewing it. How do you sew it together? What stitch do you use? And this is all hand sewn, fully lined, and then sewn together. So this this is lovely, but put, putting the closure on, it's got a little button. So this is uh, this is perfect for somebody who hasn't sewn before, or if you're only a machine sewer and you want to learn more about the basics of hand sewing, it's all in here. And then it teaches you about embellishments, add a bit of ribbon or applique. And then what do all the words mean? This, that's a really nice, what do the words mean? Like um, applique and basting and bias. But what a nice little bag, it's called sew a bag. Um, very nice gift. Iron, now I love this. Actually, I'm not gonna, is that the, that is, yeah, I'm not gonna take it out because this is the one that we use. Do I have one down here? Ta-da! Yes. It's lovely. Now, I will tell you what, let's make sure it's off. Yeah, it is. Before I touch it, it's still warm. So if, um, you know when you go on holiday and they have travel irons in hotels and they're rubbish, they're always rubbish. You think, oh, I may as well just hold the kettle up against it, it'd be better. These are brilliant. So yes, they're perfect for sewing. You can have them on your sewing table next to your sewing machine. You can just, they very quickly press things, particularly if you've got a pressing mat. You don't get the mat with it. I've just put it on there. Um, it's a steam iron. Now that's what I love about it. It has a little tank so you can fill it up. It also comes with, I am going to open it because you won't be able to see otherwise. One moment. Okay, yes, ignore that image. I'm going to open this one so you can see. This one does have a UK plug. That image on the website is a foreign plug. We wouldn't do that to you. So in the, in the thing, you get your jug to put your water in, you get your iron, and you get a little travel bag to keep it in. So it is absolutely perfect when if you're doing some sewing and you think, and you're one of those people that never could be bothered to get up to go to the, to the ironing board, it's perfect for that because it has a little tank. It's really good. It is good as a full size iron. It's got a lovely ceramic base and it's really, uh, it's lovely to hold. So when you just want a little iron, but then it doubles up. When you go on holiday, this is the best thing to put in your suitcase. So in your pack, look, you will get a proper English, a UK plug. That's what you get. It's exactly the same, exactly the same. But what a great price, 26 99 I think that is a fantastic price. And we do use it every day on air, more than once. So yeah, and it's often, often out of stock, but it is a fantastic thing. So. If you're thinking about presents, somebody says to you, don't know what to buy for Christmas. In fact, if anyone I know is watching this, I would like one of these. Okay. Mm, anyone? Anyone? Would really like, like one of these because they are brilliant. If you can get it all back in the box. We'll sort that out later. I don't know how they, how do they do that? Have you ever found that? You try and, people, you buy something in a box, you open it up, and then you think, well, I'm going to remember how that went in. And then you have absolutely no idea. Well, there we go. Now I can't get that back in. I'll just put that to one side. We'll sort that. So $26.99 for that fantastic iron, which is exactly the one, same one that we use on air all the time. Um, uh, what should we do next? Let's do, we have got Odicoat. Let's do Odicoat. Can't do Odicoat. Oh. We haven't got Odie coat, so we won't do that. Bows away. Yes, we have got very different um, foam stabilizers. Now, if you wonder what is a foam stabilizer, it is like um, an interfacing or a wadding, but it's thicker. It's thicker like foam. So this is your um, Styleville. 
foam stabiliser. Now, what's amazing about this stuff is it's really thick and it's really flexible. Um, this one, the one I've got here is OXM454. I'll just move that. So this is your style veil. Now, it's really flexible, but you can sew through it. I've no idea how it works. It's really good for um, making very solid bags. So if you're making like a weekend or an overnight bag and you want it to have a very solid structured side, but still be stuffed and fold up, it's brilliant. But you can sew through the machine, no problem. I used, I've used it for lots of different things. I made a cat house with it once. We used it when I made the, um, did the Amber Makes Nativity scene because it gives things great structure and it's perfect for bags. So if you've got, say, a pattern for um, like an overnight bag, but it's quite floppy, if you use this as an interfacing in it, then it will, um, it will really give it structure, but it will also fold up as well. It's fusible on one side, which makes it so easy to use because you can just press it onto the fabric. So that's the Stybo, 11.99 for half a meter, but it is 150, oh, 150 centimeters wide, single-sided. So that's, yeah, that's the, oh, that's okay. Right, so that's the Bosal single-sided. This one is, can I just give you the code to make sure it's fine? Well? ZSM486. This is exactly the same, but it's double-sided fusible. So it does the same thing, but it's fusible on both sides. So maybe you're making a bag that's got an outer and a lining and you really want it to be fused on both sides. Or often people use them when they're making things like placemats where they want it quite solid. Maybe, you know, you don't need to with a bag. It depends how you're constructing it. But if you have something that calls for the double-sided, particularly if you're making a bag where you have um, all the separate pieces that are then bound together on the outside, so that they have bound seams, it's better to have a double-sided then because the lining will stick to it better, or things like paste mats. So they're exactly the same product, but one is single-sided and one is double-sided. But it's really good for structure, very, very quickly. Ah, right, someone has asked about the size of the quilt, and it is 127 by 152 centimetres finish size. And there are only five left. Five! Five! So, and there's 34 of you with it in basket. So if you are one of those 34, please do check out because there are only five of these left. Um, right, I have got, now we did this, I like, like this. So it's 1st of October today, guys. You can only mean one thing. Halloween's not far away. But actually, this doesn't have to be Halloween. These are, look, this is the most beautiful cat bag. Now, we are limited in stock on these. This is the most amazing panel for 19.99. I mean, obviously, you can do whatever you like with it. But this, the way it has been designed is this is the front of your bag. Please do embroider it. There's what, that's what the finished bag looks like. But please do embroider it because um, it'd look lovely with, embroidered whiskers you could just do like running stitch lines you don't have to there's the back of the bag which is in black the lining of the bag which is gorgeous autumnal orange with black cats and then the other half of the panel you've got full instructions as well about how to make the bag on the other side of the panel you've got the handles with the cat prints you've got the bag facings you've got extra fabric as well but you know you could make this into a bag a cushion because you've got the front, the back, and two linings, you could make two, use your own fabric. So you could have this for one bag and that for another. You could use it for cushions, so many things. But the inst full instructions for making a fully lined tote bag with a facing and handles for 19 99 And once you've got those instructions, you know the sizes, you can use that to make your own as well. But it's all there, everything you need. So it's fantastic. It's also exclusive to Sewing Street. Can't get anywhere else. Only 19.99. Tangerine black cat tote bag with instructions. Very limited though. So if you want it, you need to um, put it. And it's even got a little label that says "Made with Magic." That's really sweet. Right. Zip it. Which one? Right. Zips now. Love these. I always have 
a stack of metal tea sips because I love I love using them for little purses. So a metal tea sip, if you're making like a little coin purse, these are absolutely perfect for them. Put some fabric tabs on either end and then use smaller pieces of fabric. You know, quite often we're saying with keep the ends of the fabrics, use the extra bits, make perfect purses. But um, metal teeth zip, a 10 centimetre is, is the perfect coin purse size. So if you've got some fabrics left over, you're thinking about making a few presents for people, pop a few of these in. I always have a stack of metal tea sips for purses, because and these are just the right size. I mean, they're probably for jeans or something. And I've got a pun bundle of 10 zips, a bundle, a bundle of 10 zips, not on my table. Oh, yes, I have. There we go. Ooh, 10 of them. So how much are they individually? So the black one is two ninety nine. So we. So these are again. Let me take one out so you can see. So you've got ten. So these work out one ninety nine a zip. These are six inches or fifteen centimeters long. So these are perfect for little purses. Cause you know, whether it's a. A zippers or whether you use it as like a little makeup bag now if you want it to be shorter you can make it shorter you just have to be very careful when you go when you get to the teeth bit when you're sewing just hand wind your machine over that and just jump over you can't just sew, otherwise you'll break your sewing machine needle but a pack of 10 of these is perfect I because I love and I and if I'm making little even if it's a makeup bag I prefer a metal zip it just looks nicer quality so that's really good. I mean, I know they're, they're called trouser zips because they're the right length. But for us sewers who aren't doing trousers, this is what you use for those little bags. So when you say make a little zip purse, that's what you need. And, I, and they work out at $1.99 each. Fantastic value for money. And lovely to have a pack of 10. Right, we've got interfacing next. So this one... This is the really heavy duty, super stiff. I'm going to get it out so you can see it. Cut it with some scissors because I never get them back in. This is a bit like the stuff, if you've ever done curtain making and made your own pelmets, this is what this is like. It's really stiff. Okay. It's, all wet. it's all rolled up and cut. So this is, does it give the width of it? Yes, yeah, 30 centimetres wide and a metre long. So if you want it really stiff, I mean, often this sort of interfacing is used in collars and cuffs, but it's really good for bag making when you want make the, you know, the front of it or a pocket to be really, really stiff. It's lovely, isn't it? So it's your heavy sewing. It's not um, iron-on, it's just sewing. But 4 49 and it's perfect for those bags where you want, you know, maybe you're making like a satchel type bag or a crossbody bag where you really want the structure in it. Only four forty nine. That's amazing, isn't it? And it comes all pre-rolled up like this. I've got to get it back in the bag though. Anyway, anyway, thank you for joining me for this hour. Now, there are only five of the William Morris kits left. And more of you have them in baskets. I mean, it's a fantastic price. And it is about to sell out. It's available on split pay. You don't have to buy it on split pay. That is entirely up to you. So, um, thank you for joining me this hour. Oh, I've missed the mag... One last one before I go is the magnetic snap. But it's on the website if you want a magnetic snap. So, thank you for joining me in this hour. After the break, Barbara will be back with this beautiful bag made from a mixture of PU tapestry weight fabric and cotton lining fabric as well so i will see you back here in just a few minutes time we know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. 
And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Hello, I'm Dawn Taylor from Dawn's Taylor Made. You may remember me from the Great British Make Off competition. Um, I sewed my tablet rest last year with the lovely John Scott. Uh, Sewing Street have invited me back again to do a few more demonstrations for you, but they've also asked me to answer some questions. So the first thing I sewed was a ladybird pin cushion and I made it at primary school. And my late nanny Jo, she taught me how to knit and I think I got my love of sewing from her. She used to sew on that sewing machine over there. Um, something you don't know about me is I sew standing up. Um, my husband built me this sewing table. It's very similar to the one that you see on Sewing Street. My tip is more haste, less speed. My nan was always telling me to slow down um, and to enjoy what I was sewing and I would make less mistakes. And we also have a YouTube channel and a few Facebook pages. I cannot wait to start my journey with Sewing Street and I will see you there very soon. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet. Then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere. Browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals. And message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day.
and welcome back to Sewing Street. We have got the most wonderful bag making hour for you. Gorgeous, gorgeous design. I absolutely love this. And a choice of three kits as well as the pattern to make it. So I'm just going to run through all the kits and the patterns that we've got first. And then we'll do on Barbara who is going to show you exactly how to make this lovely bag. So this bag designed by Angela Presley um, from the Sewing Club is called the Rondell bag. So kit number one. Let's do the kit that Barbara's made her sample in. So this is called the, is it the grey one? Has this got a special name? I don't know. Anyway, that's the bag that Barbara's made. It's, it's got in it. Yeah, it's called the grey tapestry rondelle bag. So in the kit, you get the pattern and the fabric, two and a half metres of, to make this. So I'll just show you the pattern first, because that's really important. Let me just open it up. Okay. So in the pattern, you've got everything that you need to know to make this. And Barbara was going to be showing us how to do it. So we will show you in a minute. Look, all the really very, very clear walkthrough photos. And I like that it's got details like here, where you've actually sort of got the stitching lines drawn on top of them. It makes it really easy to understand. There we are. All the instructions, all the walkthrough photos. But you've also got the pattern pieces and they are full size so none of that enlarge on your photocopier by 138 percent you don't know how to do that it's all on there already everything you need now what you'll notice from the bag is that it has this outer section here oh there you go the outer section that's the pu and then you've got an inner section of another fabric and it's lined as well so this bag you get a meter so in the kit, 38.99, we've got the pattern. You get a metre of the grey PU that's used for the outer section of the bag. You then get a metre of this. This is like upholstery weight. It's gorgeous, like a tapestry fabric. It's lovely because it's... Let me look, look how much you get. It's massive, isn't it? And look... I, what I, we've, when I've seen this fabric before, I think you could actually use the other side if you want. Because although that's the wrong side, you know, it depends what effect you want. So you get a whole metre of that. And then you get half a metre of plain grey, just cotton fabric, and that is used for the lining. So that's everything that you need to make the bag. 38 99 you get the full pattern. You get the PU fabric for the outside, you get the tapestry fabric for the, the sort of the inner section, and then you get um, the cotton fabric for the lining. All in that one kit. But if you want another colourway, we have it in black. So in the black kit, you get a metre of black PU. Yeah. You get a metre of slightly different, I mean, the same weight, but different pattern. Again, Look, the wrong side is just as nice. You could just choose, just goes bright. Metre of that, so stylish, isn't it? And then you get half a metre of this pale grey fabric that's used for the lining. So that's the black one. Now, one more colour. Problem is, you've got to choose. And then this one is called wine. So again, in the kit, you get the pattern, everything you need to know, all the pattern pieces, all the details. You get a metre of this wine. It's like an aubergine colour. Or maybe a burgundy or a merlot, perhaps. Metre of that in the PU. Metre of this tapestry fabric. Again, a slightly different design. It's like an Aztec type design. You get a metre of that. And you get half a metre of the nude fabric that matches the background and that's for you the lining and there's a picture of it finished in the um wine colorway very stylish isn't it you buy that in a boutique for a lot more money than that i love that but if you have your own fabric and you would like to buy just the pattern sticker it is very 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 limited but we do have a few just patterns. There we go, 11 pounds for just the pattern without any of the fabric. You'd have to provide your own. 
So if you do want just the pattern on its own, we do have that for £11. Pop it in your basket and check out. Okay. Right. So, Barbara. Hello. Welcome back. <laughs> thank welcome you. Welcome back. Thank so, you, thank um, you. how did you find the pattern? So, the pattern is lovely. Like you say, it's got lots and lots of pictures in it. Mm. There's a lot of information in it. Um, I'm under pressure today because Andre is Angela's watching yeah. me. So <laughs> <laughs> she's um, she's messaged me. So um, yeah. yeah, so it is. It's a lovely pattern to work with. It's um, a beautiful finish. It's really really nice, beautiful and I love. Bag. I just love this. I know it's fabric. It is. It's um, and there's so much you can make little wine. bags. You're yeah. using the wine. One, I am. Aren't you? I'm going to make the wine one today. It's thicker than curtain fabric, isn't it? It is. It's like yeah. upholstery. It's really be nice to make I, it makes me think of um carpet mary poppins carpet bag yes yeah that's exactly what it's like mm. isn't it it's really nice so yeah. where did you start where did you so, start with it so um i i'll show you the bits from the pattern um because um when you cut all the pieces out in the back you've got um i'm going to do the pu part first so you've got a little piece here that you have to join onto the top to create that curve mm. okay so if you see that in the pattern you'll think what's that for just fits on there and you join oh these. okay only purely because it doesn't fit onto yeah the it doesn't shape. fit onto right. the a4 so, you so there's a so you stick that together um and you cut those out on the fold so you need four of those um so you will end up with four oh. of these i've cut it all out ready to go so um you'll end up with four of these sort of upside down tees like that <laughs> okay and we have got uh, where's the facing bit here we are so there's a small a facing piece here okay that you cut yeah, out I'm sort of looking at the okay. back I can see where the yeah are going so now. then these two join together so I'll show you how to put the facing on um, first of all, so I've done three of them. This is the one I haven't done. So your facing piece needs to go onto the right side of the PU because we're going to pull those Yeah, which sounds wrong, doesn't it? Does. It does, <laughs> and when I looked at it the first, I thought that can't be right, right. but there is method in the madness. So. And that's Decaville. This isn't. This is, is that just the fabric? This is just right. the fabric, okay, yes. Yeah. So this is the that nude. Some point, You will do, yeah. Um, and you've got a little... Oh, um, so that's just the lining fabric that you get. Yeah, right, just okay, the lining. Right. Um, so this here, you have to cut this out. This gives us this little... That's your little hole. Yeah, little okay. hole. Okay, so we'll just position it onto the PU and I'm going to use some um, quilt clips just to hold, the, hold it in place while we stitch because we're going to have to stitch around that line right okay it is very stylish isn't it? it is the sort of thing that you would see i've seen mm. loads of people walking around the streets with this sort of mm. type of bag so yeah it is it's a lovely beautiful um, not that i walk around streets yes. you know i this don't actually wandering the street yeah i don't stalk people <laughs> <laughs> but no it is it, and it's a really nice way of showcasing a beautiful fabric. Mm. It's like framed, isn't it, in the in the circle? It is, yeah. So I'm just gonna go around the edge there, just these quilting clips are so good. So you just sew around. So I'm up. just following that line. Uh, I've used the um, what do they call them? The friction pen on this just to draw just take that one off oh see that's quite um yeah, that feels like quite easy because you've got a line that you're sewing along, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it is, yeah. Before you're committing to anything else, you feel like, oh. I'm just going to trim. Okay. So I've stitched around that line. Now what you need to do is cut it. So mm. I know. <gasps> <laughs> so I'm just going to fold that in half. So we're just going to snip down the middle here. Okay. Okay. Because these are going to be the handles for, sorry, the holes where the handles right. go in. and 
So you cut, so, so you, you fold just it in half to make a cut. Fold it in half to make a cut so you can get your scissors in. Uh, you could probably use some smaller ones, but I'm just using the bigger ones. So. And I'm just oh, so you're not actually cutting anything I'm out. I'm not cutting. I am. I'm just, I'm just making it so I can get the scissors in. So I'm just going to the corners slightly. And then I'm going to trim. Okay. Just trim this bit to leave sort of a quarter of an inch. A little... Okay, so I've just trimmed that out. There we go. Yeah, lovely. So you just trim it to... So just trim it to make it tidy. And then just snip those into that corner so that these give you a nice finish. I've got, mm. You can see that. Well, I guess it's worth spending a bit of time on that, isn't it? To it is, yeah, just to nice give that finish. nice edge. Right. Right. So now what you do is you take these pieces of facing and you push them through the hole and you bring them all the way through to the other side. And what this does, and then you're going to iron it out, what it does is it gives you a nice neat finish on your... Yeah. Um, like on your box. bag handle, yeah. So how is it pressing this PU? It's good um, because you've got a, a fabric. The, the back end of oh, it is okay. uh, the so back side of it is. Have you press the? What happens if you press the front? Does it um, melt? It will melt. You right. can do it if you use a an iron. Um, sorry, not an iron. A, a tea towel. So if you put right. sort of then some fabric, and okay. then you can. But don't put the iron onto the PU itself because you will melt the fabric. Um, unless you want that sort of style of bag, mm -hmm. maybe. <laughs> yeah, but it's quite nice with this kit, isn't it? Because you're getting all the bright bits you need. You need the PU, you need the heavier weight fabric, you, do. you need the lining fabric, and it's um, it's sourcing those things mm -hmm. is not always the easiest. You could make this into a bit of a design feature if you wanted to. Um, so you can see the inside of it. You can use the Aztec fabric just oh, okay. because you'll see a slight um, you'll see it slightly in you know when the two pieces yeah. are together. So I'm just gonna iron that round. Uh, there we go. So if I turn that round there we are. So that should just give you, so you can just see it's yeah. very slightly. You could pull that up and top stitch all the way around there if you wanted to, oh, okay. just to give it a nice um, But that's nice up edge. to you, you, know, you don't but have that's, to. No. And again, even though it's a, um, it's a ready-made pattern, you've got, you can actually add some little bits to it if you wanted to. Um, there is a pocket that goes into this, which I'm not going to put in today, but you could put it on the outside if you wanted to. Just oh, to, that's true. You know, put a couple of pockets in. Um, I've put some interfacing on this just to give it a little bit more stiffness mm. when you put the two together. I haven't put it on all of them because it might be too stiff, and it's quite nice to have that sort of bending on the... Oh, yes, I suppose because you've got four, you've got two on the outside and yeah. two on the inside, so two are like a lining. Yeah. So I'm just going to quickly iron these. You've just got to sort of manipulate the fabric a little bit as you, uh, as you go round. I was just saying to Elliot, I've... Um, just bought two of these, uh, three of these little irons. <laughs> I haven't three? Yeah. Why have you bought three? Um, because my niece, Emma, hi Emma, is um, doing textiles at school. Oh, and okay. so she's, um, she was, she's watching me this morning with her mum. So, hi uh, Emma, um, good morning. She, Send us a picture of your textiles. <laughs> They're very nice, actually. Yeah, well, she's like been doing some them. chain I'm stitching. Glad nice to have some younger viewers. It is. So yeah, I know it's actually quite interesting. We have a lot of people who message us in, say they watch with their children and their grandchildren and their nieces, and that's lovely, isn't it? Mm. So you bought her one. So I bought her one. Yeah. 
which is nice. Um, right, I'm just going to quickly do these and then I shall show you how to put these together. Okay. Okay. So by the time you've done this, you'll have worked out, because quite often this yeah. post box method is used for sort of zi um, pockets on the inside, internal pockets as yes, well. Yes, they are. I'll say you just sort of need to just sort of pull it round and manipulate it as you go round so that it stays in place. Yeah. Because it often looks like it's not going to happen, does it? But mm. it's just playing with it. I'll say these irons are great for that. I know, I really want one. Use them all the time here and I still haven't got one. <laughs> I'll just have to buy myself one. Well, do you know what? Quite often when I've gone to buy one, we're, we've, they're out of stock with them. We get them in, they go out. There's only three left. Oh, it's going to happen again. This is why I've never got one. <laughs> By the time I come off her, they've sold out again. There we go. And the last one. Mm. Shall I just make those? Make sure those corners are snipped. Otherwise, it doesn't. Uh, you'll find little puckers in the in the fabric. So does she say to put interfacing on them? Yeah, um, you can put, if you're using a, a different fabric, um, it does suggest using um, the fusible fleece, um, fusible oh, wadding. Okay. Because right, that so just if you're gives not it, using a PU. Yeah, but I'm not, not using that because it's such a nice heavyweight fabric mm. and the PU, it's not really necessary to put in sort of the wadding. Yeah, but I can see with some other fabrics yeah, it would be nice. It would give it that real um, just give structure, it that, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, that and it will hold the bag up as well. Okay, so that should be. Whoop. Okay, so I've ironed all of those, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take one of the ones with the interfacing, one of the ones without. And we're going to join those two pieces together. Right, right sides together. Yeah, so right sides together. And it does suggest using um, a centimetre. So okay. a centimetre um, uh, seam allowance on this. Okay. Now, in a minute, I'll change my foot to a Teflon foot to go over the um right so at the moment it's fine it's so when fine. you're sewing the pu if you're doing right sides together you can just use a normal foot yeah so it's when you're sewing on the right side of it yeah okay okay so that creates that side okay yeah so, and then what we it need look to funny, do doesn't it it's such a funny shape it does it's all a bit confusing yeah. when, when <laughs> well, you first just make a, it. You can and see you what think, it well, makes, but it's look, yeah. it look funny. You've got these funny round so, shapes and little holes in. Okay, and then we're going to do the same with this one. However, I'm going to pop the interfacing on this side. Um, no. So it's that on the side. One. Yeah. No, it is that way. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we'll do the same again with this piece here. We'll just give that a... There we go, so now we've got two of these. Okay, so, no I didn't do it, what you need to do then is join these two together, so we need to make sure that we've got all our faces. Oh, so now we're wrong sides so together. So we're wrong sides together, and this is going to create the yeah. outer part of the bag. Yes, which okay. is kind of the structure to it. Yeah. So... Just going to 
No. Apologies. <laughs> it is that way. Right sides together. Right sides. <laughs> okay. I'm so sorry. It's all right, I'm not fine. Okay. So right sides together. Make sure your holes are in the right yeah, place. Yeah. And then we're going to clip. All the way round. Oh. These are much nicer than pins as well. So you don't really want to put pins in your PU, do you? Just make sure that those two seams at the mm. bottom are joined yeah, together so match all as of well. That up. And again, because your right side's together, you don't need to yeah. worry about feet. to keep those two together. So the one that we've got on screen though is the one that um, Barbara's demonstrating, that's the wine one. Um, in that kit you get, that's what it looks like finished, you you get the pattern. Well Barbara's just pinning all that together. Um, you get the pattern, you get a metre of the lovely wine, more like, um, like aubergine or a deep burgundy. Maybe a Merlot. Maybe a Merlot or a Claret. A metre of that in the PU, a metre of this gorgeous tapestry fabric. It's lovely, isn't it? Really is aztec -y. And then you get half a metre of the um, nude colour cotton fabric. That's used for your sort of facings and linings. Mm -hmm. Thirty-eight ninety-nine, and that is exactly the right fabrics because often the problem with, you know, specific projects and bags is you need specific fabrics for them. And that is exactly what you need for that one, 38 99 The sample that we have on the shelf behind Barbara that's grey, that's this, that's that, that one there, you get a metre of the grey PVC, PVC, PU, <laughs> PU, um, a metre of the tapestry fabric in this lovely sort of, heart, it's called harlequin like diamonds and facets all together then you get half a meter of the plain gray that's used for the um, facings and the linings and the full pattern which comes with all the walkthrough photos all the pattern pieces for you ready for you to cut out everything you need to know so for 38.99 you can make your very own beautiful designer bag and you get to keep the pattern so you can make more of them as well and we have one final colorway if you fancy a black one you've got a meter of the black p u then you've got a metre of the tapestry fabric. And then you've got half a metre of the pale grey cotton fabric. And obviously the pattern comes with this one as well. Okay. But if you do want the pattern on, the, on its own, we do have the pattern on its own. There it is. £11 and then you can use your own fabric. It does say in here how much fabric you'll need and what sort of fabric. Things like um, cotton canvas, twill, faux PU, what you've got, suede, light for the base and then lighter weight fabrics for the inside. Oh look, Angela's messaged in. Morning Barbara Rebecca, I'm so excited to see my bag on today. It can only mean more people will be making it. So hooray, great demo Angela. Oh, oh thanks Angela, that's really morning. kind. It is a beautiful pattern, I absolutely love it. I think it's genius. It looks very designer, it's very unusual. Um, and I think it's really clever the way it's done that it's, you, ha you don't have to have lots of different findings and fastenings no. and clips because it's all built in. So mm -hmm. Angela, Beautiful design, love it. Okay. Right. Okay, so I've clipped it all together. Right. So what we need to do now is stitch it from this corner here, from this end, all the way round. Yeah. Okay, to the other side, just on the top half mm -hmm. of that. So I'll do that. And then, um, and again, it's a centimetre. And then we're going to turn it round the right way. And I'm using a wine cotton 
but you could if you wanted to on the outside when you start doing round the mm. top stitching you could do it in a different color because that would give it another yes that's true another look but this seems to go through the machine really well it's doesn't it? sewing lovely yeah where it gets a little bit stuck on that just on where you've turned it okay so go, go gently on that bit oh just to keep that nice curved yeah just make sure that facing's pointing down And I guess, I mean, those the post box holes will match up anyway because they will, they're in yeah. the same place. So what else do you need from that? Oh, and just some rivets. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's optional as well. You don't even need to have rivets. Nearly there. Mm. Okay. There we go. So I've stitched all the way around the edges right. here. Right, okay. Now it says to snip round the edge, but you can use pink and oh, shears because it yes. gives you the... Just to reduce a bit of bulk. Just to reduce the bulk, yep. So I'll just trim just around the tops here. But if you haven't got pink and shears, what do you do? Yeah, just you just trim do it. the yeah, just trim it. Um, I would say on the corners here, you can use your scissors um, and just snip out some triangles. Mm. You know, like this. I made a dress once that had loads of these. They were everywhere. <laughs> All, <laughs> All those around the snippings. yeah. So you could just snip them out like. Like that. On the other side. Oh. You need some really sharp scissors for that. Okay. So you just snip out all of the things. Just snip out all of the curves. Okay. And then and then you turn it round. So I'll do it on this one. Okay. So then we're going to turn this the right way round. And then it starts revealing itself. And then it will, yeah. So if you just take the time to snip them all out, mm -hmm. but for speed, we're just going to... We're just going to do it this way. Oh, there's a lot, a lot of, um, lot of new buyers today. That's oh, nice good. to see, isn't it? But it's beautiful bag. There's a lovely pattern, so I'm not surprised. And what I love about our kits is that you get to keep the pattern, don't you? You do. <laughs> so you can make more of them because it is a lovely bag. You could make one for the beach, in canvas and stripes. The wine is the most popular at the moment. Mm, that's what exactly what it will look like when it's finished. It's okay. quite nice that you have the tapestry fabric to line the handle. Yes, it just it just yeah, gives that that yeah, little yeah, pop but it again, does doesn't look it? Lovely, doesn't it? Right. Okay. So, with an um, you you would need to press this down 
So how okay. would you advise? So I would advise using a um, tea towel or a piece of um, cotton right. just to hold over the top okay. um, and then press the, um, the PU because you won't be able to do it, obviously, like I said, without... Um, I'm just pushing up those corners a little bit. Okay. There we go. So then that becomes our bag. Oh. And that's your outer part. Wow. Yeah. Of the bag. I would say if you top stitch these bits here, it just keeps everything in nice oh, okay. and tidy. And we'll just push that one out as well. It's a little bit bulky, that one. I think that's the one I didn't trim, so, okay. Yeah, so if you've taken, make that's why you realise you need to trim them. Yes, yeah. Okay, so that's our outer bag made mm -hmm. so far. Okay, so with this, with the inner bag, because we're going to have to do the inner bag now. Yes, okay. Yeah, that's um, the, well, the tapestry bit. Yeah, so with the tapestry part, there is no pattern in, um, there's no sort of pattern okay. piece. So what it tells you to do is to, on the fold, um, we're going to cut a piece of um, fabric that's 37 centimetres yeah, so uh, wide. Yes, it gives you the measurements. It gives you the yeah, measurements okay. and 31 right. centimetres high. And then you'll end up with a rectangular piece of fabric. Right. Like that. Okay. And you will need a, well that's the, you will need another piece that goes on the top. And this creates our, uh, where our notches are, where our holes and things are going to be. For okay, the is that the, um, the gathering bit? Yeah, so this is the gathering part. So that's the same width, um, but seven centimetres higher. Okay. Okay. Now in the book as well, in your pattern, you've also got notches here. So right, it can tell okay. you, um, and you can use this. It's not actually a pattern piece, but it does give you where uh, you okay, need to put the notches. The yeah. So what it, what it asks you to do is to, I use the pins on this one, is the four centimetres in. I'm just going to grab a tape measure if we've got one. Have we, have we got a tape measure anywhere? Um, there's a tape measure here. Oh, can I? There you go. Thank you. Okay, so it asks you to mark in this left-hand corner four centimetres. And we're going to leave that part open, which is there. See, that looked quite big then, four centimetres. There we are. Oh, okay. Okay, so we're going to leave that, that flap will stay open. Mm. So we'll start from the pin, we'll stitch from the pin right. down. Okay. Yeah, so that's your sort of drawstring so channel. So that's our drawstring uh, channel, okay. yeah. And then this side is three centimetres. So when they join up, that becomes a hole. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then it tells you from, so we've got four centimetres, whoop, which is going to be the gap. Oh, there we go. So I'll pin it there. Okay. Right, now we're going to measure from there to 19 centimetres. So this is all on the notches. And then this one will be our, our next hole. Four centimetres again, because that's going to be the... And then it's 18 centimetres. So we'll measure to there. and then another four. Okay, so this is going to be where all our little notches are in the bag, and you do the same with the lining as well. Right, okay. Okay. Oh, so the lining is exactly the so same. So the lining right. is exactly the same, yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave this one, this top part here, mm. and then we're going to stitch 
Oh. We're going to stitch down to the next pin. Okay. And then move down to the next one. So why are you leaving gaps? Because they match up with the holes in here. Right. So then you oh. put the, the handles all the way oh, through okay. all of the... Which probably makes sense when you get to that point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My advice would be read the pattern um, a couple of times, just read it through and then yeah. before you start sort of cutting your... Yeah, I am. I'm read, reading the yeah. pattern. Yeah, so there's so much information in there. It's a very good good pattern. I know, I'm not very good at re pre-reading patterns because I get a bit too excited. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then you think, oh, I wish I'd read that. Or you just watch this back. You do, yeah. And follow the pattern, because actually now I'm following it. It's making sense now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to just press, open that out, press those seams. So these these two seams are nice and flat. Yes. Okay, and then we'll top stitch those just to keep them mm. in place. And then I can show you the... Um, yeah, you've got about 10 minutes left. Okay. So how do you find the tapestry fabric to work with? It's really nice. It does f it does fray um, because you've got so many, you yes. know. Um, so I would suggest if you're going to, um, again, over you can overlock them. Right, um, but it presses. And but it presses lovely. Okay. Irons, yeah, does. It is a lovely fabric, and you have so much in the pack. You know, you could make. I know you've got a whole meter, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, there's, there's so many other things you could do with it. Like you said, you know, you could make a nice little purse bag. Yeah, well, it's quite nice that you'd have, lovely with that, that you have in the kits. It's yeah. We often have a bit I left used, over. I think it so was you this can make I some used. Of your own projects with it I as think well. I used this. It might have been the other one. Um, I made a little curvy clutch oh, okay. bag and a small purse with the tapestry mm. fabric last time I was on. So you could make a nice... Well, it's nice that you have more because you don't have to worry that you're not going to yeah. have enough to cut so it out. So along but here, she says, okay. there we are. Can you see the little holes? Yes. And these are going to be the notches for right. the handles. So that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. it's important that you get those in the right places. So yeah, make sure you get those in the right places. And then we're going to just quickly run along that seam just to keep them out. And again, I, I would probably, I would overlock these. Um, before you turn them, just so that you don't get all the little threads coming through the the holes. Also, because there are so many photos in these instructions, if you're a bit lazy and you can't be able to read them all through, even though you should, just look at the photos, because it does, you know, yeah. it does make it clear what's going to happen and when, and I think it's always, it's like when you make anything, the second one is always better than the first. But if we actually read the instructions, that's <laughs> yeah. No, but there's some really good photos here. Say so there's some good good tips in there and some. Um... Okay, I'll leave that one for now. Right. Okay, so I'll just quickly run through this as well. So the notches are in here. So then, what you do next before you stitch it together is take your outer bag. And you need to position, the, the, you know, these little clips that I had on the ends here. Yes. You need to position that these bag holes about halfway between the two. Right. Okay, sorry, in the centre of there. Okay. And again, if you press this out, it'll, it, it, you won't yes, have all these that, little puckers. Nice. but. Okay, and then what you have to do is to stitch, you measure 20 centimetres up from the bottom. Oh, there's Oops. the wonder clips, because you will need wonder clips because you can't pin PU. Yeah. The reason for that 
It's the pin box. We'll see. And it is suggested you use uh, quilting tape as well. You can use that just to stick that down uh, okay. on here. Yes. Because what we're going to do is from these points here, so 20 centimetres up. Um, let's turn that up the right way. So it would be there. So I'm just going to mark it on here. Whoops. Just above there. And you could put a couple of clips on the top here just to hold it in place as well. Make sure it's all level. There we go. Okay. And then okay. that just holds it. And it just hold it in place. Um, and again, 20 centimetres that side. I'm just doing it by eye because it's quicker. And there we go. And then you're going to stitch from this corner here, from this edge here, yeah. all the way around to this part here. Nice. Okay. I'm so now we're going to be sewing on the right side of the PU. Yeah. So how is what? So I originally um, used a walking foot for right. most of it because it just fabrics obviously together. The walking foot didn't like the PU. It okay. doesn't. Um, it puckered. So because obviously it's. Um, I don't know what you call it, but, but it doesn't. It's sticky. It's, well, it's sticky, not sticky, but it's not. It? Yeah, I want to say sticky, but it's not. Yeah, it's, but it isn't slidey yeah. like so fabric. So for those of you that know what I'm talking about, yeah. you'll know it. It just it, it sticks puckers. to your foot. It does. It sticks to the metal foot. Mm. So what um, I what I decided to do was use a Teflon foot, okay. a plastic Teflon one, because it glides over the PU better. Yeah, the metal just reacts with it. It doesn't does. It? Yeah. So. But you can use a roller foot, so if you've got one of those in your machine, that well, you works. you were telling me about those today. Them. Or if you haven't, you can put masking tape on the bottom of your foot. Ah, you have to idea, obviously make yeah. sure that it's only on the bit of the foot and not going across. Mm -hmm. But if you haven't got one and you wait for one to arrive and you haven't bought a special foot, if you put masking tape on the bottom of your normal foot, it's just enough to stop it sticking. Mm -hmm. So I'm just... My top tip. But... A roller foot's my favourite because I tried all of them. Yeah, I'm going to see if I can find one of those. Um, right, so what I've done is I'm just I'm just going to stitch along, sort of. You can do it as close or as far okay. away as you right. want to. You don't. Long. It doesn't have oh, that's to be. True. Yes. You know, and I've made it qu a, quite a bigger stitch as well because okay. it just looks a little bit more decorative. But if you've got decorative stitches on your machine, you could do a nice, oh, true. nice little Aztec you know stitch if you wanted so I'm just going to go around the edge here let's turn that in and so just take your time You've got five minutes. Oh no! I know, but you, I think you've got really far because you think you know you'd only cut the pieces out, and now you've you know done the faces, you've turned them round, mm. you've joined all that. You know, to to this stage of um, top stitching the PU on that looks so lovely. I like the contrast of the two fabrics it's as well. It's lovely, isn't it? It is nice, right? It's nice kit. And there we are. Nice machine. It is a nice machine. It's a nice like machine. It's going through that PU beautifully, isn't it? But I think it's something about the PU, and it's the same if you use oil cloth, it, the, the metal feet just stick mm -hmm. to them. Yeah, I did. I started it. I was like, no, mm. please don't do this to me. And leather as well. <laughs> terrible. Yeah. Terrible. But once you've got the right foot, that's why I, I think I've got so many feet. To try different things to see which works the best. Okay. So I've stitched that part okay. onto here. Lovely. It's coming. How are we doing? We Yeah, no, no, we're all okay. right. Okay. Another five minutes. Right. So then what we're going to do. 
is we're going to stitch the two pieces together. Right. Okay, so this is then going to create the, gonna the round bag. Yeah. So I'm just going to turn those pieces in. Then this part here folds across and we're going to stitch along here. And then that will create your whole... It's like a piece of engineering, but this yeah, bag, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. <laughs> like, all the everything's so worked I out I think Angela advance, did say... It? It and how, did, how, what's that gap and what's that gap? And the yeah. order as well. So you've just got to trust, trust the process. Mm -hmm. I know she took quite some time to create this the bag. Well, like, so. you know, but I can tell. Because all of this, you know, everything is precise, isn't it? Mm -hmm. so, and it absolutely works. Love it. So I'm just pinning these in. Pins go nicely in this as well. Yeah, That's I guess because it's quite an open wing, yeah. isn't it? Well, but you, you, I'm sure you'd be able to have enough to, left to make a cushion or something. Yeah, you would. I've got. I'm going to use some of it to make a couple to go in my camper van. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's just turn that. I didn't do that part. Right. So I've stitched that top part. Now mm. I'm just going to do the bottom. Ah, okay. So, so you, you keep yeah. those two open because otherwise your your um your hole will be sealed. Okay. Okay. Move my pins. Now, we turn it round the right way, it will make even more sense. Yeah, so you, yeah we've only got like a couple of minutes left. So, okay. so yeah, talk me through what happens. So, next what then. you would do next. So, we've got a whole inner bag so now. So, you've that's got a whole together. inner bag, and you're going to take these two ends mm. and you're going to open them out and stitch right. those together. Right. I wondered how that was going to right, make sense. Okay. Now. Yeah. I'll pin them so you can <laughs> yeah, so you we can, can see. see it. Okay. So imagine that's been stitched. Yes. Okay. Then that now creates that. Morning ladies, can you tell me how to order another colour in this bag because it's only showing the wine colour? Right, so Trudy, if you go onto sewingstreet.com and click on watch live and you scroll down below that you will see it there. All the other colour options are there. It's just that we've only got the one up there. Hang on. So if you go on there, you'll, he's going to show you now. So click on today's show deals. Look, there's the pattern on its own. There's the black one and there's the grey one. Just there. So if you click, just where I am, so if you click on um, watch live, then on today's show deals you'll see it there okay. oh so and then you have to sew the other side yeah so then you sew that side this is the one i've just pinned so yes um and then that creates your outer bag yeah perfect okay and these holes that we've put here oh, match the holes there, that are here so that becomes your hand so the lining part is exactly the same mm. um you have a bottom piece here, so you've got your round bottom. Yes. So you would take do that first. Okay. So you sew so the bottom. Yes. Yep. Yeah, so take. But the this. instructions are really good, aren't they? They really are. They're very. They're very clear. So that's lovely. Very well, thank clear. you so that's much. Okay, that's okay. You're very been, welcome. It's been brilliant. I'm sorry I've rushed you. No, but, that's um, fine. I think you've shown <laughs> us the trickiest bit. Yes, which is I great, have. But thanks ever so much. That's it's okay. Been you're lovely. very welcome. It's thank been you. A pleasure. Um, right, I'm just going to quickly run through the kits before the end of Sewing Street and then we, um, before we go to Yarn Lane. So, the one that Barbara's just making is the wine one and over half of the stock has gone of this. So, if you want the wine one, you really need to check out if it's in your basket. So, you get the full pattern, everything you need in that. You get a metre of wine PU. And remember, Barbara said you've got more than enough here. So, you will have fabric left over to make other things as well. Half of the stock is gone. You get um, a metre of the tapestry fabric. You get half a metre of the cotton fabric that's for the lining and the pattern. That's the burgundy one, the wine one. If you want to make the grey one, which we've got a picture of, 
you get, again, the full pattern. There's the picture of the grey one. So you get the grey PU metre. You get a metre of the tapestry fabric. You get half a metre of the light grey cotton fabric and the pattern. Now, finally, if you want to make a black one, you get a metre of black PU. You get a metre of the tapestry in these little squares and triangles, got a real 3D appearance. And then you get half a metre of the pale grey, which is used for the lining and, of course, the pattern. Now, if you want to buy the pattern on its own, which has got all the templates in it, and it does tell you on here exactly what sort of fabric you need and how much. That's all on the back of the um, instructions, if you need that. That tells you everything that you need to buy as well. So you obviously buying the pattern, you don't get everything in the kit, but there's all the information you need there. £11, and that's the pattern and all the instructions that are in there. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me on Sewing Street today. We've had a lovely, a lovely day of William Morris and bags and fabrics. Um, how many William Morris have we got left, Paul? Oh, he's just going to have a quick look, see if we've got any left. Four. Four. Yeah, and we had... Yes, and we have 34 of you with it in the basket. So if you want it, you really, really need to check out. 30 of you will miss out. So please do check out. Remember, it is only one PMP a day. And that goes across Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. So if you stay with Yarn Lane, you've covered your PMP already. Um, the William Morris kit, 99.99. If you want to do it on split pay, you can do it in two equal payments of 49.99. And you won't be charged interest. You just have one lot taken out now. One lot in a month's time, but you will be sent it straight away. So thank you for joining me on Sewing Street today. Tomorrow on Sewing Street, it's Saturday, we are going to have 8 o'clock Halloween fabrics and kits, because 2nd of December, if you want to make anything for Halloween, you need to get on with it. 9 o'clock, we've got Adele Rowland in, who is so doing the sew over at the Ultimate Shift Dress. 10 o'clock, we've got Early Bird Deals. Okay. Maybe they moved early bird deals to 10 o'clock. That's exciting, isn't it? There must be some, something very special going. I uh, need to tune in at 10 to see what that is. Um, Adele will be back um, with the pus Pussy Bow Blouse at 11 o'clock and 12 o'clock is Yarn Lane. And that is lots of kits and yarn for autumn. Now, 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 talk about our Yarn Lane. How excited am I? Very, very. I asked specifically. Normally, I present on a Monday, and I said, "No, can I please do a Friday this week?" Because we are launching the Zandra Rhodes pattern collection. She has been working with West Yorkshire Spinners. They launched it just a few days ago on their website, but we are we've been given it um, on Sewing Street. We have got her yarn. We've got her patterns, we've got bundles of the yarn, and we've got the lovely Danielle from West Yorkshire Spinners, who's just waiting to come on air, who's been working with Zandra on the, um, the design, because she has created her own patterns and her own yarn in conjunction with West Yorkshire Spinners. That is very exciting. So please don't go anywhere. If you're watching on Facebook or the, or the website, you'll need to move to www.yarnlane.com. If you're watching on the TV, stay where you are. You've probably got time to make a cup of tea. I will see you back here in a few minutes' time when we are going to meet the brand new collection from Zandra Rhodes.